All right, we are live. Hi, everyone. So today I am talking about um, the respective merits of Model G and Model A with Landsource, also known as Ryan Petrello. Ryan runs the Jungle. You've seen him be interviewed on the channel before. Now, the point of contention with us is not like some of the past debates where it was something like Model A or Model G, which is better. Instead, Ryan takes a more nuanced view on this matter. He is what I would call one of the new uh, socionics uh, syncretists in that what he wants to do, what he believes is that there are merits to both Model A and Model G and that they are both complementary. In a way, it's would you be would I be right to say, Ryan's a bit like you know the idea of people uh, trying to grope an elephant, whereby one person gropes the, the the tail, another person gropes the trunk, and the idea is that each of the different viewpoints they all latch onto something of great value about the true socionics, and that to get the true socionics you need these different models brought together. Is that is that a fair um, what's the word uh, analogy to draw? Yeah, I would say so. It's, it's it's like kind of like an optical illusion, right? Like that one that looks like both a rabbit and a duck, right? And yeah. people are saying, oh, it's a rabbit, right? Uh, it's, it's both, right? Um, so yeah, I, I think that is a good topic that we're having because this is one of the most frequent um, mm. sort of, um, this is one of the most frequent sort of questions I get, right? When talking yeah. about the theory. Right, is like, you know, what, what's Model A and Model G? Like, what, what's going on there? How different are they? Um, and even if I provide sort of, you know, um, resources, right, like on the subject, some of it's still a little bit too, like, deep in the weeds and doesn't clearly, yeah. right, like, illustrate, like, uh, what the main points of, of difference and similarity are. So this should hopefully clear that kind of stuff up. And like I said before, I don't think I don't think we're gonna like this is gonna be some yankees red sox thing where yeah. we're gonna like uh yeah like have a large disagreement but we'll see we'll no. see i mean at the end of the day right if i start disagreeing for the sake of disagreeing and sort of opposing what you think for the sake of protecting what i think this is in the public forum so people are going to see that people are going to recognize that and i'll look like an idiot so there is no hiding it's about us laboring at working out what the truth is together and hopefully in doing so elevating socionics as a theory and that elevation yeah. it seems to me is of two potential extremes one is where i realize the value of model g and therefore i become a socionic syncretist like yourself or sure. it could be one where I finally get to, well, I say finally, I, 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 get, I get one step closer to putting Model G to bed by uh, sure. snapping out any possibility of it having any merit or value to add. I mean, saying sure. that, I think it already has added some, some value. So in some ways, I concede part of the point in that I think that what Golenko has done is think about these ideas and bring up certain themes, which I think were actually very important when it came to me also looking at Model A and finding where these different parts and ideas perhaps actually belong. Certain ideas which he comes up with, like the idea of a socially adaptive block and the idea of there being um, certain functions carrying certain levels of energy afforded to them. I think that those ideas definitely belong in Model A. It's just that I don't think it justifies having an, an ergo model. I think it still fits under information. It's the energy provided to the metabolism of information. And I think that which functions are assigned to which levels of energy afforded to them, I think is also different, if that makes sense. Fair. Um, but yeah. What, well, what are people saying already? So only saying, how am I able to keep the baby so chill? Um, yeah, it's impressive. No, he was already asleep. He was asleep on, on, on Zara. Uh, I took him because yeah, when Zara wants to pump, she needs the baby off her. So I'm holding on to the baby until he needs feeding, at which point he'll start crying. And she'll come in and she'll take him. 
and then we can resume our debate. So yes, okay. um, I have no special skill for making him. Uh, well, to be fair, I have to do it several times a night. I have to. Uh, he sleeps under my armpit at the moment, so I do oh, have man. some. I have learnt some tricks for putting him to sleep. But yes, none of them involve depriving him of oxygen. You'll be glad to know. Uh, but yes, okay. So, yeah, Ryan, um, what would you say are the parts where you found me to be especially dismissive? What are the parts you think are of great value, which, you know, I should be aware of as having value? Um, like, what, where do I see the main points of contention being? Like, Yeah, what are the points you think, look, I think Jack is being too dismissive here. I, I wish he would just recognize, actually, this does have value, and these are the reasons why. Yeah, I mean, I think that you sort of take the um, sort of the role of like a structural fundamentalist when it comes to yeah. Model A, and that you see Model G as something that is incompatible or just just too markedly different or contradictory in what it brings to socionics or to superfluous, right? Um, as you've you know sort of vocalized in the past and. I, if I want to, like, maybe if I am wrong here, I would like to see how, because having done my own investigation into it, I don't see how that could really be the case, given that at the end of the day, regardless of what you think about the semantics that Galenko sort of added with his energy blocks, the structure that he's using is actually not only not markedly different from Model A, but arguably a better visual representation of the information elements than Model A, especially because, right, as you'll see if you look at something like Lao Tsunami's Taurus model, where he can uh, connect all of the information elements together into yeah. one geometric structure, right, that's what Model G does i was actually having a conversation with lao where he sort of had that eureka moment where he saw it emerge he said that's the taurus that's the taurus model right and all that i had done was sort of flatten out model g right like graphically and it just so happens that without maybe him having like research into model g he reached the same sort of like um geometric conclusions and how everything connects together and yeah. I think you'll see that as well. Um, so that's the main thing. Model G connects all the information elements together, whereas Model A inherently seems to cleave them in half, right? Uh, via static dynamic or mental vital. Mental vital, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And I, I, I get the point that, that there is a certain aesthetic grievance to be had against Model A. And I think... A key aspect of this is that the demonstrative function, which I think is so important, is sort of sequestered to the bottom block being the id block. At the same time, I think that okay, you you can one could take that point of view that you know the demonstrative function should be up near the front near the ego block, but at the same time, if we look and we understand model A as being a model where the strongest elements are furthest outside and the weakest elements are furthest inside, one can then easily uh, presume from that, or reach, or, or reach a conclusion from that, that yes, the demonstrative function is still highly important. But I, I get the a point there, which is, at least in terms of understanding how the type functions, there is this idea of the triad. I know Ibrahim has talked about the triad as well. The idea that, in effect, you have the, the leading function and you have the creative function, but you also have the demonstrative function working with the creative function. And that is ill represented in the um, in the arrangement shown in Model A. It is right. something which is logically deducible from the function dichotomies. If right. you, and it's something which I've been teaching quite recently, which is least in my course, that when it comes to certain interactions between the functions, if you have um, 
where you have the creative and the demonstrative together, that because they are they share in both being of the same domain, for instance, for Anayali, they both be logic, um, they would have what I'd call mastery. Mastery is yeah. going to be that fluid interplay between the creative and demonstrative. Why is there mastery? Why is there that fluid interplay? Because not only are they strong, they're also what I call flexible. Yes. Like what call contact. contact. Yes. Yeah. And so by merit of them being contact, there is a receptivity of both of them and essentially a bleeding between. There's also not such a distinct, um, what's the word, um, superiority of one over the other. One is superior in terms of energy. Yeah. The other. Yeah, as well. Yes. And the other is superior in terms of value, in terms of its preferment. Yeah. And so by one having one having less energy but being preferred and the other one having more energy but being not preferred, there is more of a teamwork that goes on. Whereas if you look at the leading and the ignoring, you have no such interaction. It's a very different sort of interaction. I've called it the domination interaction, where both that where these two functions, again, sharing in the same domain, as all interactions are called must share in the same domain. In other words, both logic or both intuition, both sensation, etc. But essentially, they're both inert. So there isn't that fluid interplay. They are they are it's set in one position or another. And the one that is preferred is also the one of greater energy. And the one that is less preferred is one of lesser energy. So there's a clear hierarchy going on there um, rather than a teamwork. And that's why we talk about the ignoring function as that thing which is almost kept in a box until um, on the leading function's terms, it is let out and able to act um, very effectively. Um, and this idea of it being able to act very effectively but used minimalistically lines up very well with some of the ideas Galenko was floating around about minimal, minimum energy as opposed to pessimum energy. Um, although he does not actually gi give the ignoring function minimum energy, he gives it pessimum energy, which is insufficient energy to solve the issues. Instead, he grants uh, uh, minimum energy to what we would call the vulnerable function, which should not have enough of anything to solve any particular issue. It's meant to be the blind spot. Well, in the pessimum essentially expends residual energy remaining in the system, right? So it's able to expend whatever is left over, right? And it's also um, decelerating and it's private or cautious. So it's in an awkward position. That's definitely something that matches up between the model A ignoring and the model G controlling. Both the ignoring function in both models is awkward. That's probably the best way to look at it. It's not necessarily weak because in the same way, uh, it shares the faculty of the lead element. So if you're an NE lead and you're ignoring NI, yes, you're ignoring NI, you have a bad relationship with that element, yep. but you're an intuitive dominant. Yep. That's still intuition. So yep. if going, you're not going to have the same problems as someone who's NI polar, right? You know, uh, but at the same time, it is the sort of I can, but I don't want to sort of element. Right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. And so it's good that you incorporate, you know, concepts of energy in how you teach Model A, which is good because information and energy are very fundamental concepts when it comes to something like psychological type. Right. You have, you know, taking in information from the external environment to inform yourself on what's going on externally and internally. And then that would be a useless, uh, worthless process if there was not the secondary component of allocating energy expenditure to make use of that information to create your own information, right, in the external world, right, to do things, objectives, et cetera, interact. Um, so, you know, one of the main things here, like you said at the beginning, right, one of the ways that you could sort of denote a type like an ILE would be NET, right? Because like you said, the strong producing contact faculty is flexible, right? That is something that uh, distinguishes, right? Um, pairs of types belonging to the same club, right? NTPs or ILXs, 
right, have inert, right, sort of stubborn intuition, but they have flexible logic. Yeah. The rational NTs, right, they have inert, stubborn logic, but flexible intuition, yeah. right? So what Model G is doing, right, at the very least, is helping provide a more intuitive visual illustration, right, of that dynamic by showing the leading function as being adjacent to the demonstrative and the creative, right? Showing that it is very much like your lead function then flowing into the contact faculty, right? So demonstrative TE, uh, uh, creative TI. I wish I was able to show some of my own visuals here. Maybe I will be able to down the line. Right. But at the very least, right, one thing I want to address so I don't, you know, forget a lot of the stuff I want to talk about is sort of like right here, right? If you sort of see this, one thing you'll notice, right, is that it resembles adjacent pairs on the benefit rank for starters. So you'll have a type in the middle column, and then you'll yeah. have the two pairs that are adjacent, the two types that are adjacent to it on its benefit ring right next to it. One other thing you'll notice is that if you were to draw diagonal lines going through the center of this graph, right, yeah. from northwest to southeast and then southwest to northeast, you would notice that one of those lines goes through quadra and then the other one of those lines goes through club. So you'll see all of the NT functions are here and then all of the alpha functions are here, depending on which way you are slicing through that graph, right? So you have club being offset and then quadra being sort of latticed on top of it, like a pie crust, right? And then what's missing is the super ego, right? Which would be essentially, you know, it would be separated by one column. So it would either be here or here, right? Um, but also in, in doing that, we've also sacrificed other aspects. For instance, how, if we point to this diagram, this is Ben Vaisland's Model G diagram. Sure. How do you, what is the shape of determining the strong elements from the weak elements? Uh, the shape of determining the strong elements from the weak yes. elements? Yes. So when it came to the shape, when it came to um, to, to a Model A, you had it that the outer two were strong and the inner two were weak. And also it was layered such, such that you had strength and also energy, so bold, cautious, essentially, that would go in almost like a spiral. And you had almost alternating spirals going like this that would essentially convey yeah. the descending nature of dimensionality down to the center. That, I would say, once you knew what it was, was actually very intuitive. When I was a look at this, and it, it strikes me as actually quite a ugly <laughs> in terms of the symmetry. Really? Of it. Interesting. Yes. Cool. I, I, I've always found it very unpleasant to look at. Because if you can, you see, this is meant to be for the ESC, right? Yeah. You've got FE, fine, extroverted ethics, and you've got SI down in the self-affirmation. Well, it's no longer in the same block. It's been asserted that the social mission is actually the leading and the demonstrative, which sounds to me to be very strange. Why would your mission be something you, partly you don't value, which is going to be your demonstrative function? And, mm -hmm. Sorry. and but then also you have belonging in this where all th three of them are strong. One of them is very weak introverted logic i see what they've done they've taken the flex leg has taken the flexible valued parts and stuck them in self-affirmation but then he's taken um when it comes to the social mission they aren't flexible both flexible or both valued one is valued and inert or stubborn the other one is not valued but flexible so every, everything seems a hodgepodge rather than following some kind of intuitive symmetry well, it's definitely following a symmetry. If you want to talk about the semantic hodgepodge, that's something that I would say is fair because looking at anything in socionics, it looks a little far-fetched at first, right? But mm -hmm. at the very least, as far as the social mission block is concerned, right? Yeah. Well, what do we know about dimensionality as it pertains to Model A? We know that the highest tier of dimensionality represents um, essentially your most differentiated pair of functions. Right. It, it occupies the temporal yeah. or the time, right, parameter of dimensionality. Yeah. And thus, right, is poised 
to make differentiated actions, not only situationally, but into the future. A social mission type doesn't necessarily mean, a uh, social mission block, doesn't mean that the type truly values both of those elements. What it means is that in utilizing both of those elements to solve problems across the lifespan, right, that is where the lion's share of its differentiated, unique contribution to society is coming from, all right? In the case of an ILE, right, N-E and T-E, right? So yeah. not only generating ideas that are based in fundamental structures that explain external phenomena, but yeah. also being able to articulate and set the stage for those ideas to actually be applied and mm. scaled, right? If not by the ILE themselves, than by people who are actually poised or prepared to take on that information that the ILE has created and then put it into practice. So right. I definitely think that the, um, the top blocks are more justifiable than the lower blocks because like we said, fourth dimensionality like uh, represents that differentiated state of strength for that pair of elements. Then, we also have the aptly named social adaptation block, which would house the elements that meet the second dimension of strength, right? Which is yeah. normative, right? And so immediately you can make the connection there about how the social adaptation block works. Now, in my own life and as well as observing people, I can definitely say that I've very much seen this in practice in many cases and in many types, right? The super ego or the role function seems to represent a mask of sorts that people use, right? It's something where you sort of feel a pressure to develop it because there you see that society uses it to a certain extent and you want to meet those standards, yes. right? It also helps create a buffer, right, between your actual ego and something that you care about and can be hurt, right? And the person that you're engaging. You're almost creating a buffer, right? Okay. Between something and okay. yourself, right? Yeah. Interesting. Now, that being said, I'm not hanging my hat on this. I'm just sort of uh, showing how, right, this, this term social adaptation would apply to the two-dimensional, the second-dimensional elements, right? And then, of course, public, right, as the, or bold. Right. I personally speaking, I you can use model A metabolic dichotomy names for model G. Galenko wants to be like, you know, sort of like his own savant and give them his own names. At the end of the day, but the semantics of how they're described match up pretty well between both. It's just splitting hairs at that point. But Although, for instance, you're talking about social adaptation, and I'm yeah. on board with you as regards the role. It's, the role is the socially adaptive function. I would go so far as to say that the demonstrative is also very socially adaptive, although it works. So it, it's more than capable of operating on its own as well as being socially adaptive. You don't like to talk about it. Right. Because from a temperamental perspective, right, yeah. what EJ element, for example, using an ILE, right, yeah. does the ILE actually value and care about? Well, the mobilizing is part of the top tier of value. So yes. along with the leading, it's the most valued element. So how, but how is that how is that shown in is it's not shown in this table, is it? The that, that? That, that the F that for instance, for an ESC, as you said, the uh, FE and NE would be the yeah. top tier of value. Yeah. They are what I call the two assertive functions because they're the yeah. ones which are valued. They are inert, stubborn. And yeah. also they are, uh, well, they're not strong. One strong, one isn't. So they're both bold, though. So what, how do we convey that idea in this table, which is meant to show far more value for us to understand the functions and how they interact? Interesting you say that because I would say that Model G's representation Actually, yeah. um, what's it called? Is the best way of illustrating the name of the sixth function in model A, the mobilizing. It's the last function in the sequence and thus is delivering information directly back to the leading. It is literally mobilizing the leading. It is at the end of the line and thus that is what is feeding directly back into the beginning of the system. 
so that the valued elements sort of look like a staircase where it's coming in from the mobilizing, then yep. going down to the creative and then to the suggestive. And then where's that going? To the mobilizing again, which then goes back to the lead, right? And this of, is not shown here, right? Which is why you need to expand this outward and see a ring going around in a loop. A ring going around in a loop in a similar vein to how, for example, Ibrahim represents the Model A elements using a cube, right? Which combines right. value and strength. So when you combine value yeah. and strength together, right? Yeah. You have the mental ring occupying both, right? Value and strength tiers in sequence. So right. NE is both, yeah, high value, high dimensionality, all the way down to the polar. And then in the medial layers, you have the vital ring. So the same applies, right, with model G. But notice what's different. It's the same thing, but what's different here? There's just one tiny little change. One tiny little change makes all the difference. Okay, but right, Ryan, one thing though, right? Yeah. So we're talking there about the primus, well, the, prim the importance of a, of a mobilizing function of the launch was shown by it being at the end, because you say that because it is actually a loop, it goes in and next the lead again. If we look at Model A, right, we were talking, one of the criticisms that I sort of, um, I proactively showed to you, which you agreed with, was that demonst the demonstrator function shouldn't be at the end. But now you've removed the problem of something being at the end, and actually it is a virtue of it being at the end. And if we treat Model A as a some kind of loop as well, TE is right, well, sorry, the demonstrator function is right there next to the leading function. Because after mm -hmm. eight, if it's a loop, it becomes one again. So, you know, we need to, if we're going to criticize the aesthetic structure of one on one principle, we need to apply that same principle to the other model. Well, that's true, except for the fact that model A does not show how, what the connection is in terms of information transfer between the lead and the demonstrative, whereas model G does show that relation. I'm, I'm also another thing I'm skeptical of this whole asserted idea that that energy is passed from the mobilizing to the leading and that restarts some sort of cycle of energy. Absolutely. And ILE is highly dependent on their mood, right? Like, for example, like if they're not emotionally engaged, they're mm. going to be lethargic, right? And ILE is hatching its best ideas when it's inspired. That's what FE mobilizing is doing. It's providing inspiration, right, to NE and saying, wait, this is exciting, right? ILEs get excited about ideas, but, right? But they, only, they only get excited once they've seen the idea. Yes, and that helps actually feed, like, that gets their emotions up, well, right? Well, no, 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 this, 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 this goes back. This goes Notice back. A connection. You need, noticing a yeah. connection is different than generating your own novel ideas, right? Noticing something, right, then creates a state of arousal, which then helps you actually start connecting things. No, but no, noticing what? Noticing a connection. Noticing a connection. Yes, noticing a connection. Watching something. Let's say idly watching a YouTube video, right? And all of a sudden you see yeah. something and you're like, ooh. Oh, that's interesting. That's sort that, of what. Well, 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 yes, because that's an identification. Hang on, there's something of potential here. Mm -hmm. There's something possible here, and yes. then the excitement comes, and then the action is done. The movement to actually do things comes from the passion, but the passion is triggered by the recognition of the possibility. This goes back to the cycle of information metabolism, where wow. where intuition must come before ethics. And ethics then comes before sensation. And then sensation comes before logic. And logic then comes before intuition again. But the mobilizing helps push the type into actually tapping into its demonstrative, for example. Where, where, you know, where is the, but, but, but what you just, the example you just gave, I would say contra is the opposite of what the cycle of metabolism would suggest and what I would say makes sense. You said ILEs are motivated to do things by their mood. Okay, to do things. 
that's not necessarily their leading function because extroverted intuition is about doing things. It's about un, it's about seeing and uh, keeping open possibilities. Yeah. So what's the next uh, element in the sequence? The demonstrative, which you don't value, right? But that is part of your social mission. That's a highly differentiated element. Utilizing that element can actually help you actualize that potential and start to create and build things. But what's going to actually help you get that push, get that push into the demonstrative? What's going to actually help you finally start tapping into an element that you don't value at all? What's going to help that? What's going to help you make that push? The no, I, well, I, I, I would say actually demonstrator comes before the leading. The, the, uh, yes, I'd say so. I mean, first it's of all, context, you, you, need, you need logic to get to intuition, but I'll explain why, right? M the reason why I'm motivated to learn factual information is because by doing that, that opens up new possibilities. That enables me to then see new directions of opportunity, which then excites me, gets me passionate, which then actually gets me working on something and stops me from being lazy. So it moves me into action, extroverted sensation. By, mo by mo being motivated into action, I then actually change the, 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 the actual structure of body of knowledge in some way, which is the logic. And here by changing... Mm -hmm. I was just saying, here is where we start to get into the distinction between information and energy a little bit, don't we? Right? Because actually doing something is different than just working with the information, right? And ILE tends to be very much mired by lethargy and inaction, right? How do you get them to start acting? Well, a lot of that is going to be that push, right, from their FE to actually get them into a heightened state of energy, to get them into a high, like think of an electron yes. orbiting around a nucleus. It's yes. knocking it onto a higher orbital. Yes. And that is the purpose of FE. FE is the tr is the translator from potential mm -hmm. energy to kinetic energy, mm -hmm. which is potential energy represented as extrovert intuition and kinetic energy represented as extrovert sensation. And keep in mind, too, a lot of what we're talking about here, like, for example, the demonstrative being on the other end of the graph in model A and yeah. then the mobilizing being on the other end of the graph in model G is simply a consequence of representing it in a symmetrical two-dimensional frame. Whereas all you would have to do, the thing about Model G that's interesting is if you take the bottom row, for example, and yeah. you, you shift it one to the left or to the right, sure. right, you're getting an axis and then a faculty. If you shift it to the left, you're getting F-E-T-I, S-E-N-I, T-E-F-I, N-E-S-I. If you shift it to the right, you're getting F, S, T, N, right? That's what you'll notice. It's axis and faculty latticed on top of each other. So if you're going this way, you're going to see faculties, S, T, N. And if you're going the other way, you're seeing axes, F, E, T, I, S, E, N, I, T, E, F, I. You'll also notice that if you chop that in half, right, just like if you chop model A in half, you get bold cautious. But if you chop it along the y-axis, you don't get a dichotomy. But if you switch any temperament, you get every other dichotomy. If you switch Fi and Ti in there, you get strong and weak. If you switch Ni and Si in there, you get a, a value. You would, have, you would have to switch. And the right. same way, if you, were, if you allowed yourself to switch things in Model A, just one switch, you could also reveal much of the structure. Fair, fair. But, but um, this so, point, so, remember, but basically, what is one of, and we've agreed on this in the past, what is one of the biggest reasons for mistypes? Um, one of the most common mistyping relationships in the theory, the right? Interestingly theory. enough, it's not yeah. one dichotomy off. It's not one dichotomy off. More frequently, it's two dichotomies off. Huh, that's weird. Two dichotomies off, right? Isn't it? It's more frequent that that happens than along the supervision way, right? So one other intuitive way of, of visually illustrating these elements is that the representation of the elements is well, along the benefit ring. Well, well, 
what well, you well you say it's oh it's two dichotomies off how interesting that that's I'd say that that that, that point's not a bit of a non-starter there are 15 oh. dichotomies rather than four it's only the Myers Briggs well I say the Myers Briggs some socialists as well the, Jungian, the, the four core <laughs> Jungian, sure but right. all 15 I'd one say are all important yes I agree yeah. but you know those are those are like the uh, the one factor dichotomy. So those are the sure. simplest tier of complexity, well, right? And then the others. Well, are but are they are they the simplest tier of complexity? Yes, yes. Because carefree yeah. yielding, you get those by crossing them on top sure. of each other. St static static dynamic is is just as is just e as basic. and p over each other. E p i j. You have to cross extroverted introverted yeah. and rational irrational over one another, and then you mm. get static dynamic. You you can you can do it the other way around. There's right. no reason why what some dichotomies come before others. Is I mean, it, well, okay. When it comes to type dichotomies, yes. But when it comes to static and dynamic, when you think of the the E P I J etc. reaching static dynamic, you could also get to extroverted, right? From essentially rational and static. But you're splitting and, it up. You're not splitting up ex in, extroverted introverted by itself. Does yeah. not. You don't. You can't get static and dynamic from that by itself you need to incorporate well, irrational, irrational. Uh, right? yes yeah, yeah that's you need rational irrational but the yeah. same way you can't get to you could say for instance you can't really get to rational until you have extrovert and static together or introverted and dynamic etc you get the four jungian dichotomies by splitting two yeah. of those higher dichotomies into two pieces so if you take static dynamic and then you take democratic aristocratic, you can split okay. static dynamic into extroverted, introverted, rational, rational, and then yeah. you can split democratic aristocratic into intuition, sensing, sure. logic, ethics. Sure. Right? But there's, so those there's are no... higher order. They're two factor dichotomies. But, but okay, okay. What? Why can't you have right? Why can't you split into two, from say the static extroverts and the dynamic? Um, extroverts because where did what? static dynamic come from where did it come where did, from? where did any of it come from well what are the static types what are the static types they are eps and ijs the static yeah. types are eps and ijs which means to draw out the static types you, 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 need could, say, you, 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 you need you could you could also you could also say right let's 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 give static and dynamic an s and a d right so essentially, the 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 perceiving types or irrational types are the IDs, right? Um, and um, sorry, what was that? So yeah, the, the, the P type are the IDs, and the yes, the and and the um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah the, I, the IDs and the oh, for goodness sake, and, so the, um, and the and the e, and the e, and the ESs. So yeah. yes, so the point is. There isn't a, a primacy there. There's no reason to suggest one's only that Jung happened to come up with those four first. It's it's a chron the chronology is one of the development of our ideas. There's no fundamental reason why it has to be that way. It's just that we come to give letters to these four and not letters to the others. Um, if you're drawing them out, right? Then it work exactly like the same way. ID, you get DI, EP, right? Like those are constituent parts because that's a hot, that's a more complex dichotomy. That's well, how right, that's right. Myers Briggs. That's the Myers Briggs, their four letter yeah. code. That they that's an asymmetry. If you were to put static dynamic at the end, yeah. right, you wouldn't get uh, it, they would not be symmetrical to one another because it requires more to get ah. that static dynamic dichotomy than My, to get the rational rational. Oh, okay. yeah, he's, he's still asleep. Still asleep, no complaints yet. Yeah. Do you want to take him? All right, I'm just going to very quickly transfer my son to my wife. I'll be right back. Absolutely. Hang on just a second. All righty.
Right. I'm back. All right. So, yeah, I mean, but it comes to static and dynamic. That, I'd say, is... Okay, you could take the viewpoint that rational and irrational is the most prime of all of them, right? And you could say that because it sits at the axis between both intuition and sensation, logic and ethics, etc. But if you were to take that one's primal, there's no reason to say that extroversion and introversion. Yeah, I know you can. You, you have that diagram. I know that. But okay. you could switch over. You could easily switch it over, and you just have a different diagram. I, I agree with you on that. It, yes, playing around it, it, with those. It's, 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 it's a trivial point. It's not. It's, it isn't like a, a a great moment of profundity. It's a trivial well, point. You could switch. Sw sw but static over. dynamic is still building in right energy vector. If you take in any information element, like NE, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Then okay. Well, what is it made of? It's N, which is perceiving, fine, right? But it's also extroverted as the more noticeable, right, uh, emergent result of that element. Static dynamic is much more difficult to type someone on than extroverted, introverted. I Jung think himself comes... said that, that was the most noticeable dichotomy, right? Like, because they're opposites. If you think about it, temperament is a very important concept in the theory. But static types involve right types of opposite temperaments completely you're getting the extroverted irrationals and the introverted rationals the, so the ease, rigid. Yeah. okay but the ease with which something is diagnosed it does not itself tell you of the primacy in the same way is it so easy to tell if someone's a rational or irrational type compared to extroversion and introversion um generally yes I mean, I, would, I would agree. Mm -hmm. I, I, I find it, I would say it's, yes, I would agree with you because of the nature of extrovert and introvert affects the bold and cautious right functions, right? That that one's an easier one to tell because you're talking about substantial, uh, the substantial showings up of the various elements. When it comes to rational, irrational, you're talking about essentially accepting, producing. Right. In other okay. words, which one is prime in each of the blocks, which is also, I'd say, kind of, well, is also sort of lost in um, in Model G from looking at it here. But essentially, it's hard to really tell that primacy just by yeah. looking at someone's behavior. You would have to interrogate that behavior. You had mm -hmm. to ask people questions for why they're doing this or doing that. It doesn't show up so easily when it comes to static and dynamic. What is that showing up? How does that show up? It shows up by how holistic or reductionistic a person is approaching their 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 the information. So are they inclined to treat things as sort of an overall thing, or is it dividing up into parts? Our mm -hmm. nature is very much static. We are reductionists rather than holists. That's My fair. wife is definitely a holist. For her, it's not about breaking things up into different parts. It is very much about the overall feel and experience. So if you talk to someone who is an LIE, again, it's they're a holist. It's about what is the result. You well, know, think, how of well is it working. think of it this way. If you yeah. want to get the conflictor of your type, right? If yeah. you take extroverted, introverted, and then yeah. democratic, aristocratic, yep. you're not going to get your conflictor. If you take irrational, irrational, and then democratic, aristocratic, mm -hmm. you're not going to get your conflictor. You would need to take static dynamic and then democratic aristocratic to get your conflictor. That is why static dynamic is inherently a more complex dichotomy than extroverted, introverted, or rational, irrational. So you're saying because to get to your conflictor, to which to your I, conflictor wouldn't say, yeah. I wouldn't say how you get to conflictor is the marker of whether something is prime or not. But um, it's more complex. It's still like extroverted, introverted, and rational, rational are constituent parts of static yeah. and dynamic. Mm. Like you take static and dynamic and then democratic, aristocratic, right? And then yeah. you're able to get those two pairs, your mirror, your conflictor, and your superego, right? And so, um, you know, that's where you get the factors. And then you put static, dynamic, and um, democratic, aristocratic together, you get asking, declaring. Um, so yeah, that's so where I'm coming from there. But regardless, once yes. again, 
I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand why that means that that makes it prime. Because you need you, both you, of you the ones. A, you, you, you can set a standard, but if that standard is arbitrary, then why, then it doesn't really matter. Mathematically, I don't think so. And yeah. every single grouping of dichotomies that I've seen, right, it always results with the four Jungian being less complex, right, than static dynamic and uh, democratic aristocratic. Democratic mm -hmm. aristocratic and then static dynamic will break up into the four Jungian. Well, like, I mean, all at, we can say, all, 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 like, at the end of the day, right, extroverted, the extroverted, introverted, okay, a breadth focus rather than a depth focus. And then static and dynamic, whether it is made up of discrete parts or it all flows together. Understood, but at the end of the day, an extrovert and perceiving type can very much appear as though they're dynamic because they're so irrational and fluctuating. Right. Well, well, that's well, that's a misunderstanding of dynamic. It's not about change, or even static changes. It's about the regularity of the change. And the, the extrovert, the extroverted, irrational static type is one of rapid, sudden changes. Okay. Hence, it's unpredictability. It's a total difference from one second to the next. This is why an ILE, for instance, once they change their mind, they can change their mind entirely. And it's like suddenly they hold a completely different position to what they held five minutes ago, and it looks almost irrational. But it is. It's, it, they are the rational type. But when you take, say, an, a type that's extroverted and dynamic, it is far more gradual because it's about the accumulation of data over time, if it's extroverted logical. Or it's about their moods and how the moods are shifting over time. It is, again, mm -hmm. a gradual thing. It's all holistic. They never quite occupied an absolute position here as opposed to there. Well, this so, Require a very large sort of reframing in the core concepts that the theory revolves around, because uh, the understanding as it is across pretty much any Jungian-based theory, right, is that you essentially get two sets of four concepts. On the mm -hmm. one end, you get the Jungian faculties, so intuition, logic, ethics, sensing, and then on the other hand, you get the temperament, so extroverted deciding introverted yep. observing right and yep. extroverted yep. observing for deciding right so yep. if you cut those up right you are going to get democratic aristocratic and static dynamic right mm. from like combinations of those four concepts so if if we're really going to reduce knock down static dynamic to a one factor dichotomy and then say irrational rational is more complex that would require us to take a very different look at those four. Oh, you, well, you, you talk about aristocrat democratic, right? You can form, let's say, the democratic types. The democratic types are composed of the, um, well, th they are composed of the NTs and the SFs. One of which is where the NTs are static and the SFs are dynamic, and the other one where the NTs are dynamic and the, and the SFs are static. And mm -hmm. that's just as. That's just as valid as doing it with rationality. And then with cognitive style or supervision ring instead, then you get two temperaments per group and four clubs, right? Okay, sure. You, you, you can then choose a different small group, but then I can choose another small group to, uh, to venture and alternative. You get democratic or judicious, decisive, mm -hmm. merry, serious, and then positivist, negativist process result then combined yep. together to get you, right, uh, the supervision rings. So okay, but, but the point is, you 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 can, you can get together. You can get together different, various small groups. There are so many different small groups to choose from. We just decide to choose certain small groups out of the many possible small groups you can draw around the sixteen types. So then, this is a very interesting conversation on what is truly, and I guess we're going into new territory here because this is challenging what the root concepts of the theory really are because in every iteration i've seen of it it's those faculties and then those temperaments but that's right? tra that's tradition i don't think it is a necessity okay so this is why ops who uses those animal combinations right mm -hmm. yes they uh and cognitive type with james sandoval yeah. they break it down and sort of say extroverted introverted and static dynamic get you 
the main pairs of elements that communicate information with each other, right? So in a club, you're right. You have you can have information exchange between two extroverted elements or two static elements, but not two irrational elements, not two rational elements. That is what sets rational and rational apart. And that's fair. Right. And so I'm not really, that this is about model G. So that's an interesting discussion. I, you know, well, like that's, that, that's something I've been looking at as well. But regardless. Well, that's, a, that's a very look, good point as well, right? That the, the element, so sorry, the dichotomy, the information dichotomy, which two elements must share in order to block is static and dynamic. It just shows it's, you could look at that as a source of its primacy. Again, you can look at any, everything has its primacy in its own way. Yes, but if we're taking the Jungian elements themselves yeah. as the constituent parts, right, yeah. of the theory that a type is, then it makes more sense to write Fe as, um, well, how would we write that exactly? Fd, Fd versus um, Fs, and I would also okay. say some. I would, I sometimes actually find it easier to consider ethics and logic in terms of dynamic logic and static logic, and and dynamic ethics and static ethics. I find that actually, in a way, okay. If we think of, okay, if we think of, for instance, how introverted logic works, staticity shows so clearly yes. in it as opposed to dynamicity of extrovert logic. And sometimes people wonder, okay, why is extroverted logic especially extroverted compared to introverted logic? And now often that's actually harder to immediately explain as opposed to the staticity and the dynamicity of it. But I think from a practical standpoint here, trying to push things into TE, right? There's, hmm. when you try applying it based off of static and dynamic, it is, it's, I would be very interested to see how, if you're getting people interested in the theory and, yeah. and actually like trying to illustrate and describe this to people, yeah. I bet you're going to have a much tougher time if you try to represent FE as F dynamic, right? Because one of the most noticeable aspects of FE is that it is directing its emotional expression outwardly. It's the vector, right? What, 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 does, what, does, what does outward mean? onto the object. It is projecting onto objects in external space, right? As opposed to rep, uh, maybe external, external sort of understanding. If, if, we're talking about, if we're talking about external space, we, we need to keep in mind that ethics is internal. Right, it's coming from the internal because it's your internal energy state trying to affect the internal energy states of external objects. So it's a crossover. It's not as overtly external as something like TE, which is going to be the explicit, right, states of external, uh, I mean, explicit so, activities. Does, of does, that mean, does that mean that, for instance, introverted logic, right, is, yeah. lo is the opposite in that it goes from somewhere external towards something internal? Yeah, it's creating an, an impersonal. It's trying to remove, right, the subjective, like, attitude towards the object and just trying to look at it based off of its structural merits. So it's trying to sure, operate but sure, but that's, internalizing that, 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 a principle yeah. that is based off of something external, internal. like the equivalency right. principle that has nothing to do with your internal attitudes towards it, right? Right, that it is just a structural relationship that is standardized, meaning if someone else is applying that same principle, right? Like it's like a mathematical equation or an operation. Right. There's one way to go about it, like a line of code, but it's internalized in the sense that you are that's part of your definitional criteria. So it's an abstract element. So I, I, internal, I, find, I find it abstract or both are yeah, both cognitive. Right. If I find it internal or I abstract. Find this, idea, this idea that because because I I know this comes from a from a Jungian place, the idea of the orientation towards the object as opposed to the subject. Now, I've found thinking about. It? Hmm? Are you redefining it? Well, I, I've I've always taken issue with it because I think once you have external and internal, and also involved and detached, I think the idea of it being one being more objective, the other being more subjective, as being where extrovert and introvert is, is the dichotomy which houses that idea. Right. I think falls flat. 
But now let's, you're let's saying that it's about direction. Jack, it's about not moving. someone just made a very interesting point in the comment yeah. section. They said, this is the typology community in a nutshell. Come back in 10 years, they will be arguing over the same old information, like kicking a can around through the dirt. We're, we're starting to redefine everything, right? Well, we're supposed to be talking about Model G versus Model A, but now we're all of a sudden starting to redefine well, the very thing. But this, is, this is the interesting part, really, that I think mm -hmm. our divergences go back to the fundamentals. And so basically our discussion's taken an interesting direction, but I think it is ultimately um, a profound direction. If we get to the idea of extroversion, introversion, if you take the route which Jung did, which I think was mistaken, which is that it's about subject versus object, how do you then also have external and internal? Well, I like uh, objects versus relationships, right? Think of gross GDP versus per capita GDP, right? Like focusing on a gross quantity, right, versus the relationships between quantities, okay? So I think that that's another good way to look at extroversion versus introversion. Introversion but, is inherently more about relationships between things, spatial but, relations, structural relations, temporal relations, the right? The problem there is that it, that then presumes staticity and dynamicity. If you take the gross thing, that presumes dynamicity. If you present the relationship-oriented side, it assumes staticity. Is that really? I thought it was the other way around. No. If you're talking about the relationships between things, there's some sort of structure there, and there's a tying almost of strings between objects in some kind of framework. Already it's leading towards staticity. When if you're talking about the gross overall thing, it assumes some sort of holistic dynamic thing. I mean, and okay, so, and it's fragmenting something into constituent parts, okay? I mean, then, the, the, the way which I, turning these ideas over in my head, I thought that the, be, the best way to really frame extroversion, introversion is really about a breadth versus depth perspective um, or quantity versus quality perspective. Mm -hmm. And we can show that show, uh, across all the different, um, all eight uh, information metabolism elements and it doesn't then bleed into some of the other dichotomies which are there for very important reasons. Well, now, well, now go, going back to Jung and the idea of object and subject, following his idea of object and subject sitting with extroversion, introversion leads to the problems we have encountered in Jung's psychological type, such as introverted sensation being something like a psychological break from reality. What happens when you try to inter have internalized sensation and even extrovert intuition doesn't make any sense. I like this. I, I really like it, where this is going that being said like i said at the beginning uh because so many people approach me about the differences between model a and model g and not about like you know oh what about a different way of looking at young's original definition or the definitions that Oster put out for extroversion introversion that's that should be a future debate that we should have and i'm more than willing to have okay. that in the meantime I definitely would like to make sure that I get through some of my main points regarding sure, model G, sure. model A, and then we can definitely have that discussion, right? right. I'm, I'm totally uh, open to have that discussion. But um, you know, I I don't know how much time you have, but um, the the point I want to make here is that regardless of the semantics that we're going to attribute to these foundational components, yeah. right? The differences between the models that I'm trying to discuss is how they are actually visually represented, right? And the reason I like the way Galenko does it is because it allows for you to tie at least one, uh, types from each quadra together because model A is sort of, sort of confined to a closed shape of democratic, aristocratic, right? And then club, like club and then quadra, right? NTSF, alpha, gamma, right? Whereas this allows for one axis from each quadra to be represented in accordance with process results, which is going to be one of the main distinctions between how information is transferred between faculties for the different sets of types. So that's why I think it, both of these models, and I think this is probably the most important thing to tell the audience here, right, is that they are not two separate underlying structures. If you actually draw out how every Jungian element connects together into a lattice, right, you get both. You get 
uh, mental rings, you get vital rings, you get bold rings, you get cautious rings, right? If you were to expand this out, right, and you were to tessellate a plane with it, right, just make, make a giant tessellation where you repeat this shape over and over and over again, you would have mental and vital rings occupying the columns, and then you would have bold and cautious occupying the rows. Right. So it's going to unite information flow uh, at both of those dichotomies, which to your point, right, shows an intersection between extroversion, introversion, and static mm -hmm. dynamic, right, with rational and rational sort of um, being checkerboarded because there's not, not a direct exchange of information between the two. Unless you're taking the cognitive type definition yeah which talks it, about them in terms of oscillations between the accents, yeah. but that's not socionics. Do, does it show, for instance, the role's ability, like how the role, what the role blocks with in order to actually function effectively? Does it show what the role blocks with in order to actually function? Yes, it does, if you zoom out. I mean, it's showing the role okay. in accordance with the polar here. So it would just be representing the ego and then the super ego on the first and third columns. Right. But if you tick up, if you were to zoom up a little bit and look at yeah. one row above, yeah. you would see the creative flowing into the role. So if this was oh. like the IOE graph, yes, you would see right TI going into SE at that at that third column. You would see TI going into SE right there. Oh, wait, 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 wait. just because we're using an ESC here. So you're saying you'd see no, yes. ESC, you'd see SI flowing into TE. Yes, in this case, you'd see SI flowing to TE, correct? In using since we're using the ESC, would that be because it'll be placed almost like diagonally against it? Yep. So I'm just drawing it out right now. Okay. So it would look like meow. So you would essentially get. This is going to look ridiculous, by the way. But bear with me. Right, you're gonna get the roll separated by one tile, right, in any direction, but it repeats on itself. Right? Do I have a better representation with me? Um, I don't know if I do. That'll have to suffice for now. But I could put. Oh, here I have this. This is better. So that, that that's a different is that the same SI? Yeah, this would be for um oh no, I did a crossover here. This would this uh, you'd have to look at it this way. Um right. So, sorry, yeah. This okay, but, 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 but the point is you're having to draw another diagram. Ah. Now I could very easy just draw another diagram showing the benefit rings. Isn't the point of this the aesthetic argument that you know from one diagram you're able to convey the most practical meaning? Right, but the bottom line here is that like it connects everything together. Like the way, if you look right. at model A, right, bold and cautious is always separated by one. So you're, it does not show bold elements alongside each other. It doesn't. It only shows mental and vital elements alongside each other. So what model G allows for yeah. is for you to show the relationships between bold and cautious elements and mental and vital elements because of that relationship where if you were to tessellate it, you would have mental and vital rings along the columns and then bold and cautious along the rows. That's significant. Model A does not allow for this. That's a problem. You just, you just have it in diagonals. It just goes in diagonals. Well, no, because they it, the columns of model A are inert in contact. Yes, which, which I'd say is very important. It is important. But the very good news here, profoundly is important. Contact and inert is very well represented in Model G because, as you can see, you can see the stubbornness of the inert functions, right? ESEs have inert NF. So you have FE as the lead function. And then where are the other inert functions? They're in the inflation block. And then at the in the last column well, as the mobilizing. Well, no, you, you, have you, have them, you, you have them in, in uh, inflation, right? Yes. You have them in inflation, yes. Yeah, the, the the I'd say the sort of the intransigent functions together in inflation, fair enough. But the point is the rule then is not kept 
for the externalities. It's a different rule. It's a you different want to know what else is fun about this, by the way? The other thing that's fun about this is that you can switch the fourth and the third column. You could do that. I mean, sorry, my the fourth I mean, and the second column. My apologies. I'm the sure Model A, if you could swap columns around, then you could create anything you wanted as well. I no, mean, you can't create anything you want. It still needs to abide by the rules of how elements are allowed to communicate with each other. If you switch the um, the fourth and the second column, all you're doing is taking the arrow that's supposed to be pointing from left to right, and now that arrow is pointing from right to left. So that would just, every, yeah. it would still be going down, right? Yeah. The, the public, uh, the bold elements would still be sending downwardly to the cautious, but the direction would be going in the opposite way, right? right. That's still valid, right? So once again, it's yeah, a way- so It'll go from result to process and, and vice versa. Well, it would still be following the sequence of NTSF laid out by its spin. So if the uh, ESE is going from F to S to T to N to F, if you switch the fourth and the second columns, right, you would still get F to S um, to T to N to F again because it would be flowing in the opposite direction, right? You're switching the arrow. So NE would still be flowing into FE. TE yeah. would still be flowing into NE. Every yeah, bit, yeah. You would have to reverse the direction. Yes, so you, you'd be reversing yeah. the direction, but it's still the same thing. Everything is still going in the sequence laid out by process result. So you're not switching it from a process, from a result to a process type. So don't don't think of it that way. That's not what would happen. Okay. But so yeah. what? So what? It's just it's just a matter of visual illustration. That's what I'm saying. Like at the end of the day, the structure is yeah, one. But you, but you would still have to actually swap the columns around. I mean, you, or you could just know that the mobilizing feeds into the leading. It's a visual thing. In the same way that you could do something like, like you could swap, uh, switch the id block, right, with the superego okay. block of Model A and then make it strong and then weak, right? Okay. Like, yeah, switch columns and rows around. Um, what I'm saying is that it connects all information elements together. That is the only reason I'm having, like, that I'm choosing. Like, why am I saying, oh, I'm going to use Model G's graph? Why wouldn't I just use Model A, which is, like, the, the, the de facto original model in Socionics? The reason is because this allows you to convey the relationships between both of those dichotomies that you do not see illustrated in Model A. It, it, it allows for interconnectivity between all information elements. And that's significant. Now, that being said, you could still practice Model A um, and say these relationships still exist, right? But keep in mind that using Model A, you wouldn't get that, like it does not show the connection points like this. Um, does. It, it's, uh, it's difficult because I, for one, I don't see the, the conventional blocks. I don't see the, well, the ego Please block ego. Is, now, is now there. The yeah. um, the super ego is now a diagonal thing. The super id is also, well, the super id isn't even that. It's sort of, <laughs> what one is the, um, you see, the T way, is there, any is there. I'm but glad they got rid of the Freudian stuff, stuff, by the way. I'm mm -hmm. glad they got rid of the Freudian stuff because... It was always sort of a shoehorn how, you know, the sure, Freud's original triumph okay. model was ego, it, super ego, and then id, and then they just threw in the super id because they had four blocks. You know, but I, but I, also think, I also find the idea of differentiating strength and value and then actually creating blocks based on strength and value to be yeah. incredibly valuable. Yes, and that's what this does. This is well, taking, it's a lot harder to see it. It's taking the even strength tiers and then the odd value tiers, right? So if you stack up dimensionality and you stack up value, right, you are getting the fourth and second dimensional tiers, and then you are getting yeah. the third and fourth, yeah. right, value. I, I know it's, it's, it's taking the eat on the, the externalities are even strength. And um, man, the inflation and the externalities are not. Too. The inflation okay. makes perfect sense too. It makes a lot of sense that if you're not say, strength. what are not not strength and value, my apologies. But if you're talking yeah, value, about yes. cautious elements, right, for a type, 
Yeah. What cautious elements using an ILE or an SL, uh, an ESE, what cautious elements is an ILE going to use? Well, obviously it's going to use its creative because the yep. creative is the only cautious element that you actually have good usage of. But then yep. what's the other one? The one's going to be the one that you value, the suggestive element, right? Whoa. And that's going to be used largely in tandem with no, your I, I would I would say when the ignore they also can use the ignoring. That it depends on the situation. But they depends. don't want you said I can, but I don't. You, yeah, you, but also, yeah, you but look, yeah, you can, but you don't want to. And the ignoring function is, so that's the, that's the ignoring function. The suggestive is you want to, but you can't. Suggestive is you want to, but you can't. Suggestive yes, is you want to, but you can't. Time. Ignoring is you can, but you don't want to. That's why you're not using the suggestive natively, right? You're using the think. creative. But, and that's why I'd say in terms of the hierarchy of the internalities, right? It would be creative, then it would be ignoring and creative on parity for different reasons, and then it would be the vulnerable function. Okay. Well, so put it up by bold, cautious, mental, vital. It's all when there. When I, when I look when I look at this, I think, okay, there's a different rule applied to the top as to the bottom. And so I find it very ugly. It gives me the same feeling of revulsion as looking at Kiersey temperaments and interaction styles. Hmm. It's like, t but this feels like, like I'm teaching my grandfather how to use an iPad, you know, like this, like, even though it looks ugly, like this resolves an issue with model A that needs to be resolved. It's I not like think, the minor. I, I, I don't think it's an issue. I think if you want to talk you about know. the benefit rings, you draw out the benefit rings. But, yeah, I think so much has been thrown out in order to bring the rings to the forefront. Okay, you can bring the rings to the forefront, but I don't think, but then I think you should then go back to model A in terms of laying out the blocks in that sort of neat, symmetrical way. You know, you, I, I'm all in favor of having different diagrams to illustrate different points. That's sure, great. Sure. But, Why not? I, I, but I think making this the main one. It, it 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 gives me it it gives me um, an aesthetic headache. I don't know, man. Looking at Model A, telling someone about the vulnerable function, and then them seeing that the vulnerable fu function is just below the lead, right? I think that's going to create a hell of a lot more of confusion among new people learning the theory than having it uh, adjacent to the creative okay. and the demonstrative. If if you have the idea of there being alternating spirals which is the idea and you show the diagram you say this one this one, this one this one this one this one this that's one that's more simple alternating spirals is more as simple. it goes in towards the middle you say the outer ones are strong the inner ones are weak that's how i've been teaching it for years no one's found that difficult that's tradition that's a tradition based argument it's a tradition based argument but boys no one's found it difficult if it ain't broke don't fix it but i i i, I i'll tell you what I've had much easier time teaching socionics to people using Model G than using Model A. Because I started out teaching them Model A, and especially the super ego block being right below the ego block, and then the id being at the other end, and then both of the weak functions being in the second and third rows, respectively. That confuses the shit out of people. It confuses well, the living shit out of them. Right? Have you, have you, were you able to explain to people why there was meant what mental and vital is about? Yes, right. Understanding it goes in, it goes in through the accepting functions, and it creates this, this, these two different circuits, right, that are operating in tandem with one another. Yes, well, it, it, that's well, a complex well, interaction. You could, you could talk about it that way, or you could simply say that the mental functions are public in their nature, and that they're about our interactions with society, and that the part, the part which is valued and strong and public, is the part that we bring voluntarily to society as our contribution, our gift. But why and wouldn't the mobilizing ego, be public? Why wouldn't the mobilizing be public? It's a normative element, right? We why? do it for our own esteem. But it is it, private. But it emerges socially. Like like it can emerge right socially. now. Like we're both if everything sort of... everything can emerge socially. Well but it doesn't mean that we see it as the thing which we're bringing. No, that's not true. You and I both know that ILEs in particular are known for not only describing ideas, but by getting people excited about ideas, saying, guys, look, this is really cool. 
Not yes. only is this interesting, this yes. is cool, right? And trying to like, like think of Vsauce or Veritasium, right? They inject, right, this whole quirky sort of just like atmosphere of get excited. Right, right, what you're learning. right. right. I, I'm not, I'm not saying that publicly. I, I'm, I'm not just an idea enthusiator. I am a theorist who wants people to like me. Oh, I know. They start with the I, yes, with the uh, right. Ideas. So, but that's the point. We are theorists wait, first. Wait, wait, wants people to like me. Wait, no, wants people to like the idea. Because we are clever people giving out ideas. Okay. But usually, like, they're not doing it in their own self-benefit. They're not profiting off of their ideas. The, mobilize, the mobilizing function is very much a self-benefiting thing. It's tied to our esteem. Well, yes, that's true. But their esteem yes. is also tied to other people getting into the idea yeah. so that yes. they can do what they will with it, but not the is, benefit the person. The point is our esteem is very much tied to the idea, oh, I am someone who can get people excited. But that's the thing. It's that that's tied to the self, in the way which the the and actual the theories I'm I'm giving. That's just my nature. I just come up with ideas, but the and I just explain them. Is that but, that's just, but I don't just naturally get people excited. That's like, oh my goodness, I I'm doing that. That's amazing. But the mobilizing that, isn't something need. used from the shadows. The mobilizing isn't something where you know your public persona is divorced from it, and then. Only with those close to you do you show the mobilizing. If that was the way it worked, I could no, understand. It's, it's, it's not. No, it's not about I will keep this private. It's the idea that this is something for me, and the idea is, and it's the same thing for the suggestive function: needs and aspirations. Aspirations and needs they fit in the realm of private. It's not that I'm keeping it from people. It's that I don't see this as the thing I'm going to bring to people. Rather. I'm going to derive great personal satisfaction from actually being able to accomplish this as well. But right. the part which is a given is that I'm going to bring this to society, which is sure. an ego block. And so then if we're talking about elements with the same attitude as mm -hmm. sort of being energy blockings and then information elements with alternate attitudes being information, mm -hmm. right? Then the, uh, the leading and the mobilizing are going to be sort of the primary energy preference for the type. That's where the main convergence. Okay. Right? Okay. Sure. I mean, I'm not, I group them as the assertive functions. The assertive mm -hmm. functions are the pushed ones. They mm -hmm. are the pushing out of our of our values. Okay. Yeah. Very much. And the idea is also, we don't like to share that. We don't like to share that with someone else. One of the reasons why there's a tension between identity and activator relations. It's a healthy tension, but there's a still a tension is because we're sort of competing over the same space. Whereas you put mirrors and duels together, they don't compete over the same space. Sure. Because there, there's not a matching up, there's not a hitting of heads of both assertive functions. You've got assertive functions and you've also got, um, oh, what's it called again? Um, is it is it subtle? Yes, it's the more receptive, cooperative. There we go, cooperative functions. So that that, but but what I'm saying is, you know, if you talk, if you present it as public and private, and explain what those things mean, then the theme of each block becomes very clear, and the value becomes understood. That's and I think that is really at the centre of understanding the type. Once you understand the type and the infrastructure of that type, then it makes sense to start talking about the rings because the rings is not understanding the type. It's about the relationship between the types in the socium, which I agree is important, yeah. but it's not what you'd present first to people. And remember, right, as far as semantics go, right, we can definitely have that discussion at a later time, but I'm not even here to press on you about that, right? Yeah. My argument is about the structure of this visual representation. The mm -hmm. other thing being, which I haven't even mentioned yet, right, is that if you're slicing this along three dimensions, so yeah. vertically, horizontally, and then diagonally, mm -hmm. right, you get those three focal metabolic dichotomies, right? So we have bold, cautious, mental, vital, and accepting, producing. 
So if you're going along it vertically in columns, you get mental vital. If you're going along it horizontally in rows, you're getting bold cautious. And if you go along it diagonally, right? If you're looking at it diagonally, you're getting accepting producing. So all the three, the three different ways you can slice, right? This, this graph gets you those three core metabolic dichotomies, right? As opposed to. So you, so you have to, so you have to actually transposition parts of a dichotomy next to others to create that. Or are you saying that it's basically column one and column three are the, the mental ones? Column two and column four are the vital ones. Yeah, I'm just saying if you look right. at model A, for example, then look at model G and you take model A and then you do those three slices. You slice right. it vertically, you slice it horizontally, and then you slice it diagonally, right? Those slicings would get you inert contact, mental vital, and then bold cautious, okay? So, but you, but, but you wouldn't get, you wouldn't get, uh, I'm sorry, my apologies. You get, um, uh, right, okay. value subdued. My apologies. Value subdued. Wait, wait, how do you get value subdued? Value subdued. If you're taking model A and then you slice yeah. model A along its uh, horizontally along its yeah. blocks. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. Value subdued. Exactly. Right, when right. I look at this one, like, it's very hard to pick out value subdued. No, no, no. I understand that because that's going diagonally, right? It's going yeah. like a staircase, right? Yeah. It's going like a staircase. So it's taking the simple ones first, right? And then the other ones, evaluatory, situational, value subdued, they're going along the staircase, right? Strong, yeah. weak, yeah. That, that's all going along the staircase. But the three at the top, right? The odd ones, right? Yeah. The three dimensions, so to speak, right? Okay. Represent literally your three dimensions of how you can divide, okay. right? This, or, and that's why, that by the way is why you're able to make that that unification. You're able to unite the mental and vital rings, right, with the bold and cautious rings. And in a sense, in doing so, you are uniting supervision and benefit rings. You're uniting them into one visual representation, one elegant structure, right? So you don't have to throw your bottle lay in the garbage. You can still use it, but. To say that Model G is not a useful visual representation of the IMEs is something I am absolutely not convinced about. And look, look, I'm I'll do what works. The only reason I'm 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 fighting on this hill right now is because I, I'm all I'm doing is slicing through this shit every yeah. fucking day, doing Excel okay. models, scribbling it out. Okay, I, okay. okay. have you, okay, have okay, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Yes. without extending or tessellating. If you were to simply fill in, say with color, right, or just just even black and white, right, each side of the fifteen, uh, each side of the seven dichotomies, right, uh, for each dichotomy, would it lead to clear patterns, or will it lead to sort of a weird hodgepodge? Um, it would, to the extent that either model leads to a hodgepodge, it leads to a much more coherent hodgepodge. In doing so with model a because remember the rings right are very important the rings are very important like you are almost sending information yeah. along them and so representing them and the benefit rings oh my god like if, if people coming from myers-briggs coming to socionics people who are stuck between two types it's almost always along the benefit rings and when you've had people who yeah. are really like tough who are really right there well, between two types not, on the benefit ring it's not, it's not, almost, it's not way. almost always it's not always it, it's 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 very frequent sometimes right. it's quasi identical sometimes, sometimes it's, it's mirror sure right sometimes sure, it's, that it's kindred sometimes sometimes uh, it's kindred but if, if yeah. people understand pro because the kindred supervises the conflictor right the kindreds right. are supervising each other's conflictors so you know, kindreds are actually much more different than people seem to think they are. Um, and, you know, that through understanding the rings. Yeah, but yeah, but it, in, in terms kids. of actually, if we're talking, if the measure is who, how we tend to mistype, you, you know, if you tend to mistype kindred as much, yes, they're all different. But yes, the point is that the members of the benefit rings, right, they share in important qualities including extroversion or introversion yeah. but also in terms of process and results um they don't share in positive and negative um mm. but the, the point is they are 
types which are well you know they, they are playing a certain role in terms of associate whether that's in terms of moving things forward or even actually right. cycling things a bit backward and yet yeah, they are also joined by their duels in that so that is that is cool stuff mm-hmm. it's not stuff yeah. most people are going to begin to appreciate yeah. and you're going to have to give a very long explanation before people might just begin to appreciate why that might be important where i find it where i find it especially interesting is in terms of the idea of us going from the demonstrative to the mobilizing okay. and the idea that in between the demonstrative and the mobilizing is the leading due to the nature of information metabolism that cycle i talked about before mm-hmm. when you get an ile what an ile is doing is growing out of te and via ne going towards fe so okay. that's an interesting way of understanding the type and the idea that if you were to simplify that the growth from te to eventually fe being that growth transition which is so important to the type of growth. But the idea that by doing that, in a way, at each point, the benefactor almost covets what the beneficiary has and seeks to become the beneficiary to some degree. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So yeah. that, that stuff does become quite interesting. But it becomes quite interesting if you're not only you know, a nerd because you like socionics, but out of the nerds who like socionics, you're especially nerdy about socionics. Yeah. I mean, look, like, like I said, right. Like this is all about the, like we're talking about the foundation of a house, right. Versus the way that the house is decorated, furnished, etc. Right. Yeah. Like, so I'm talking about just the structure of how these information elements are arranged and illustrated because in because I've I've been testing this right in my server. I'm yeah. typing people every day, all the fucking time for free because I enjoy it. It's it's fun yeah. to do. It's interesting to see these connections. Yeah. But um, you know, I'm also just trying to like tinker around with well, what seems to be most effective in helping convey this material effectively, mm-hmm. right? And I've tried it with both and showing people model A in model A terms because remember, like I. I will do what works. I'm not here to say this is the one and I'm going to die on this hill. Like, no, that's the purpose is just trying to convey the material so that no matter what the agreed upon semantics are, right? Let's say you have the best semantics in the world. They're perfect, Mm, right? You have to convey and illustrate and articulate that. And if not, right, what you're going to get is what happens when I'm showing people model A and their eyes glaze over. When I'm describing it in model G terms, people are able to follow along better. Do, 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 you, do you find do you find that it is most important and salient to talk about on the one hand 4D 2D um co- collaborative and intransigent which is basically what these four blocks are is, is that the most important way as a static image to present um to present um the, the type yeah it's sort of mission control right so what is your differentiated contribution to society right well, so and then, then that's 4d right okay now your social tools right how do you sort of meet the normative expectations of society or how are you perceiving those normative expectations of society how are you Ooh. engaging right See, okay to okay you. okay it's so I get that 2D is normative, right? Right. So, but, 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 but normative in the way that to, the idea that you are forming norms of how to utilize it, but those don't need to be germane to society. They, just, they can do, just as easily be germane to you. Remember the Alamo. Remember the superego, okay? Because the superego is a yeah. very important connection, and the superego sort of represents that social mass, right? Uh, in the case of sure. the ILE, at least, SCFE, social adaptation, makes a ton of sense. ILEs are hedonists, right? And they're very sort of, they're very passionate, animated people, right? SE and FE, right? Ignition and then animation, right? Is very much a prominent feature of how they support what their actual 
um, differentiated contribution is. They're not natively social types. ILEs aren't going to book clubs and talking about drama in the community and, oh, how has little Timmy been doing? I hear he's uh, causing some trouble with kids on the baseball team, right? And then, you know, like, uh, they're not like, they're not like, the, the only reason to and maintain that, social communities, right? Well, that's that, well, that, that's, that's literally what, that's literally what I'm doing. <laughs> Well, no, that's I'm, not I'm, what you're doing. That's no, no, not, no, 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 literally. I'm, not I'm, on, club, I'm, right? on my not, local, I'm on my local synagogue council now to try to maintain that community so that right. the boomers, when the boomers die off, there aren't mm -hmm. anyone to replace them. Okay, fair enough. I'm literally doing that, but the but hard stuff awesome. for me is maintaining the one-to-one -one relationships, right? Right. Recognizing, oh, oh this per person has a birthday on this day. I need to talk to this person and inquire about that thing and make sure I don't forget all the personal details about each person I'm talking to. Right. But what's setting you apart as an individual from other people? What are you offering to society, Jack? What are you really producing and contributing? Your knowledge of socionics, right? Your abstract understanding of a structure yeah. that governs external phenomena right yeah. that is at the end of the day right the 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 entree that you are serving right and your social capabilities are a means yeah. of facilitating that right yeah um, but the point is i i have i don't just have one one vision i have a number of different visions socialics is the one which you know has been my longest vision but I got others as well. I am also a community builder. At least I, 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 I aspire that, to be a community builder. I still hold that you lean LSE, by the way. The way I like watching you take care of Tobias, right? You got some good caretaker romance style tendencies there. I'm telling you, right? Like you, your your SI is better than mine, but that doesn't I mean have, I, okay. I value it. My, my wife is able to tell a hungry cry from a tired cry. All I do is shove him under my armpit when he needs to sleep. And by the way, what was God Save the King? What was that all about? What was that God Save the King thing? Well, about? you know, the king was the king was uh, was was crowned. Who cares? His coronation. Who cares? No, Who I, I'm a I'm a royalist. Uh, what does that mean? What does it mean to be a royalist? The, the belief yeah. that a constitutional monarchy is the ideal form. Of a society, of a country. That sounds quite aristocratic, doesn't it? No. Yeah. Wait, yes. When you say aristocratic, what do you mean by that? A constitutional monarchy, centralizing power in the hands of a singular figure. No, not centralizing power, localizing power, but having a a standard of what it is to look up to. Localizing. Okay, standard of what the, it is. The division of the powers of 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 of, of nobility and the powers of um, competence. To have those two things divided, the idea is that the prime, the, the the head of government is different from the head of state. When you lump those two things in together, you lead to the sort of social trauma that we have for when Donald Trump became your king, essentially. Okay, well, because you didn't become a, you have a president. But, but that's the point. The president is basically the replacement king. It, right, it, well, we have, a three, we have a three-pronged, right? We have a three-pronged government that is meant to, like, yeah. the president is yeah. like, you know, essentially it gives someone uh, to say, yes, this is like where the buck stops in terms of power. But the whole point is making it so that they're not a king, right? Like, that's I, I, know, I know that's the whole yeah. point. But yeah. in effect, you have a sort of hybridized king prime minister. And so th what that means is that, for instance, right, Boris Johnson, right? But, has plenty of, but, but Boris Johnson has plenty of scandal and other sorts of naughty behaviors going on. And Donald Trump has plenty of scandal and naughty behaviors going on. But it's not traumatic to the English or the British in general that Boris Johnson has scandal attached to him. Whereas it is traumatic that Donald Trump has scandal attached to him. Why? Because your he's your head of state. Well, was your head of state, not just your head of government. Fair. Whereas for us, if the queen, well, now the king, you know, we 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 we're rankled enough that that King Charles, you know, is a divorcee, and you know stuff like that. The point is, there is a psychological need to 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 uphold a certain 
nobility for the, the figure, whoever there is, who is essentially crowned, who almost becomes the vessel for the spirit of the country. There's a deep philosophical reason for that. Okay. But personally, as a democratic type, I don't care, right? I could not well, care any less. Uh, Right now, as a, as a, I'm a libertarian. I think that, like you, you know, government is only necessary to the extent, right, that it's able to maintain a coherent society, and no further, and especially not centralizing power in the um, hands of a singular. But, 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 but no, but well, it's, it's not centralizing power. If it's a well, yes, they're monarchy. figureheads. The king, yeah. the, Charles, what power does he have? Could could no. he even really dissolve parliament if he wanted to? I mean, Hypothetically, he could prorogue parliament. He could dissolve parliament. That's, that is the role of the king, but it's not exercised in that way. The whole idea of the history going back in England, at least especially England, is that the absolutist uh, excesses of the Norman conquerors, right, were tempered over hundreds of years to the point where now we have a king who is a figurehead. And that means that the king is put in a box where it's about representing a set of Christian values, right? And yeah. I'm not a Christian, I'm a Jew. But the point is, I can see the philosophy of why that is the most stable form of government. And look at America, right, which is seems to me to be teetering on the brink of civil war. It, and it's, um, you know, it's... Well, that's... The that's part of part of between the Democrats and the Republicans... It's, it's, I'd say it's far worse than between conservatives and labor. Conservatives and labor I, I think are there is an erosion of the middle of the line, yeah, yeah. right? The, the center spectrum of ideology across yes. Western civilization. And I think that's due to a variety yeah. of factors. But yeah. mainly, right, a lot of that has to do with the fact that different sides of the spectrum have become mm. very divorced from one another and don't seem to be able to see the perspective or the criteria that the other side is using to reach their sure. conclusions. So bridging that gap, I yeah. think it's going to be something that, you know, trying to get more people interested into something that at least attempts to yes. articulate the different criteria that people use to come to major decisions is, yeah. is going to be very important. And so, okay. yeah, and, and we can agree on that. Fine. But, That's yeah, but, but the point is that, that you, those divisions are then represented, represented all the way up to your head of state and not just your head of state. Also, your Supreme Court, who are effectively appointed, yes, with, you know, go, appointed by the Senate and the president, or rather appointed by the president and approved or ratified by the Senate. The point yeah. is, it becomes the political division continues all the way up to the top. And thereby, you know, that except that there is no part where something or someone rises above such political divisions. Yes, and it's the idea happened. of the king not be not doing anything, not being allowed to do anything. Right. By, by, by nature of that, that becomes a sort of neutral safe zone. And it's um, a reflection of that division, right? Like theoretically speaking, there is yeah. nothing stopping a third party, a rationalist third party, from actually yeah. entering right that space and being able to sort of bring some semblance of balance. Too, oh, sure. you know but, that but they won't. I mean, well, that's not what well, parties do. <laughs> remember, it's like an asymptote, right? We will never live in a utopia ever, right? That's mm -hmm. not. That's not. There's no such sure. thing as perfection in this universe. But we can try yeah. our best to bring it marginally closer. And the way that I see my role in at least helping be some blip in that process is by trying to inform people on how different stakeholders right yeah. set the criteria through which they they formulate large um um large scale political and religious um beliefs i mean i think like the religious mentality especially right anchoring oneself to faith i am very averse to that i think faith is a very uh that's a powerful mechanism that can create a rational bond, right? It yeah. can it can shackle you to something that has no grounding in reality whatsoever, right? Yep. And and it's one thing to have, I guess, beliefs or to speculate about the greater beyond, but to yep. shackle yourself, right? And just just be uh, blindly uh, like have an allegiance to something yep. that has no grounding. That's a tool that can be used for uh, 
treacherous, treacherous ends. It, right? it, it, de it, it depends on the nature of what the king does. If the king does not keep his oaths, he can and has in the past been replaced. But at the same time, there is a, a swearing of fealty to that king. There is basically a contract, a very, a very sacred, at least how much this thing can be seen as sacred. It is as sacred as things get. The idea that the king kneels, you know, in a religious context, swears his oaths to keep the laws of his people. And that if he doesn't, you know, he will be removed as, say, James II was removed, as King Charles III has his head removed, it, it, Edward VIII abdicated. You know, we've been through a lot of kings and a few oh. of them we removed. I say we, I wasn't around at the time, but the English removed them themselves. As long as you make sure the keys to power don't yeah. have their interests completely in alignment. If all the keys to power have completely aligned interests, it's essentially the same thing to having a monopoly in business. There is well, no incentive, yeah. right, to benefit the consumer or in this case, the populace, right? Yeah. No, so, if you, so if you have, if you have, say, either Republican or Democrat, if let's say, Supreme Court is predominantly Republican controlled, or and then the President's Republican, and the Senate is Republican, etc., you've got all the alignment of powers. In the UK, you can't do it, it. You can't because the King or the Queen, King at the moment, always must rise above the grubbiness of politics. Sure, they exist to not be to be the non-political element, which is at, at the head, but also separate from. And the point is, it it is ludicrous. The English form is ludicrous. Everyone knows that it is ludicrous, but it also, from a purely pragmatic view, happens to work. And we can break it down into sort of the more sacred and sort of philosophical elements that make it up. Right. It, as far it, as political parties go, it would be definitely. It would definitely be um, misinformed to say that, you know, American political parties function as a unit. There's still a ton of intra-party uh, sure. conflict, sure. right? And yeah. the same, same in, the, in, in the UK, right? The, the Conservatives sure. are very split amongst themselves. Labour was very split amongst themselves, but is still under the surface. You know, that, 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 that does, that's the nature of parties. They, they only stay together when they have a common enemy, which is usually the other party. So, you know... This is a big di uh, diversion from our. From no, our I, know, I know it is. I, I, um, I, did, I did mention that you were going into politics, so I guess it was something I did want to inquire on because that is something that yeah. you know. But it's, but it's not. But this idea that this is, even if it were because of, I believed in the aristocracy of the nobility well, and all the rest, I wouldn't say that's anything really to do with aristocracy. Well, keep in mind, right? I'm not necessarily saying that you are an LSE. But I'm saying yeah. on the benefit, if what if we were to track where each other are leaning, if we are to presume that we're both in ILE, I yeah. would likely be leaning towards EIE, and I think you would likely be leaning towards LSE. Okay. Right? In, I, in my in my in my sort of the, the community I'm part of, I'm the I'm the visionary. I'm the one who says this is where we're going to be heading in 20 to 30 years' time. This is what it's going to look like. This is going to be dead, and we need to seduce people into coming along. I mean, to make people feel re revitalized and excited about this. So what are you going to change? What is part of your vision that would actually provide a novel solution to the current situation? To make it, make it more exciting to a community, well, to a demographic that has lost any sort of enthusiasm for all these different practices which have been going on ages and look all dusty and boring and sort of carried out by very dutiful types who show up every single uh, every single week. Exactly. So, you know, in these ways, I'm leaning more EIE. But, in, you know, I'm a blend of both, as we both are. I'll That's tell you what. The value of the benefit rings. Like, you, I know you are very good at making sure that you are compensated for your efforts. Right, like you are very on top. No, I'm awful. Huh? I'm bloody awful. You're it's my awful. wife who makes sure. You've been it's saying my wife who makes sure I make sure I'm compensated for my efforts. She's so, the one who says, "Are you charging for this? Are you making sure you're make getting money from this?" I don't think about this most of the time. 
but when we were uh, but yeah, yeah, when you, yes i know we i know when we talk about that yes because that's on my mind because my wife's telling me it right what but you were talking me? to me and saying yeah. like oh once uh you shouldn't enter this space like i will eventually vacate the market but as of right now like i best you best go somewhere else because the the paid typing pie is yeah. for me right and so you know you were taking a economic competition yep. approach whereas that's i'm true. Like, just I, I can i so can step in very... and i can step into that mindset that's okay. true but it's more complicated for me just being like this all the time or even most of the time most of the time my wife is the one who's reminding me yeah are you charging for this how much are you charge stop giving freebies out I, yeah, I mean, look, I, I get I, I get interested in this and I often willing to talk about it for free as we are doing right now. I'm not charging you because I enjoy this and you and, you know, we are enjoying this, this, this conversation. I'm not looking fair, again, but I wasn't able to get but, on. But, but, the, but the point now. is, my right. wife will then be going and saying, you know, actually, are you charging for this? Are you charging for that? How much are you charging? She is the one reminding me because the point is, I'm not just me. I'm me and my wife because we are a unit. So, but that's the point. When you when you see things in people, there are other people linked to it. Look, say at Nicholas II, right? It wasn't just Nicholas II, it was also Alexander Andrei Fyodorovna, right? And so he was perceived as it all being him, but really it was him granting a lot of decision making to his wife and through his wife also, right? Um, you know, the mad monk, right? Um, Rasputin. You know, this is the thing through different relationships. Don't let, don't let your wife go too hard on you, is all I'm saying. Because, like, oh, there's no, a lot no, of. No, but she's. She, I need her. I need her because I'll be a wreck if I didn't have her. Mm -hmm. I know. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't maintain my space at all. So, uh, you, you, you no. Know, so, there is this, you know. When you see things of me, there there's more complexity under the hood for it. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, look, I mean, look, uh, you're a debater, right? I like to debate. Um, it's good to, um, you know, pick people's brains, right? Check mm -hmm. things from different angles, and that's what we both do, right? Yeah. And so you made some good points earlier regarding the semantics of the importance of the static dynamic dichotomy over extroverted, introverted, rational, rational. But I think I made some valid points here, at least in terms of Model G, having a seat at the table, right? Now, not necessarily saying let's rep let's chuck Model A into the bin, but mm -hmm. definitely not chuck Model G into the bin. I think that this representation of the information elements has value and merit, for both from an educational standpoint, right, and from um, just a structural standpoint of how it goes about showing, right, axes and then faculties, right, as well as, you know, uh, representing the benefit ring. I mean, essentially, yeah. too, I mean, I, 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 I think it's, Model G was meant to be compatible. We can uh, almost look yeah. at benefit ring as relationships of energy and supervision rings as relationships of information in a yeah. sense, right? And so they can coexist, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so you can pick your preferred lens of magnification. You're looking at the same structure, which is not two dimensional, but you're taking two dimensional snapshots or cross sections, right? Of that larger structure. And this right. is one of the ways to take one of those two dimensional snapshots, just like Model A is another. But I also would say that the value provided by conveying the benefit rings does not match up to the purpose of having the types presented. The purpose of having the types presented is to best show the components that make them up, whereas the showing of the benefit rings is to best show how the various types connect together into the socium. So and, I think those two, and those two purposes have been conflated in this like I said before, that's not my only reason. The benefit, the, the whole benefit relationship is actually just a side dish to my main point, which is that it is constructed along the three main metabolic dichotomies, extroversion, introversion, static dynamic, rational, irrational, and it connects all the information elements together so that you have bold and cautious elements 
and mental and vital elements that are able to are arranged in such a way where you can see how they exchange information with each other. The only thing that's left out, of course. So, is did you say? Did you say? You say rational. Well, rational or rational is done via the, the zigzag. Uh, it's well, it would be the same relationship as in Model A. It's not a direct. There's not a yeah. direct relationship of transfer. It needs to be done by virtue of a producing element, right? Like there right. needs to be an intermediary. Um, so, okay, okay, but okay. So, so ra rational, irrational is presented via by a zigzag in both. Okay. No. No, but no, 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 it's not. It's not actually. No, 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 that's false. Sorry. Yeah, bold cautious. The, yeah, yeah. Model. Bold cautious is a zigzag. Okay. So, it's, but, but again, I don't think that I don't think that's as nearly as useful for understanding the type as presenting the you know ego, super ego, super id, id because of the separate the, 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 the distinction of strength and value. Again, can, again, that 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 is that is that is I think fundamental. The idea that you are good at something but don't value it, and you you are something you value but you don't but you aren't good at it, and so you almost covet it. Th those are the parts which are most useful. I'd say if I'm, if I'm leading someone for a coaching session, right? That's what I'm showing them because that is what is I'm saying. You're good at this. That's this where you're at. What you want to do. This that, is that the, part. Yeah. That is the accumulation of your expertise, right? You've been studying Model A for, yeah, for so yeah. long, and thus you know it backwards and forwards, yeah, right? But, but, and this is yeah. stepping into the ring, right? And you're saying, well, what's this rubbish, right? Well, okay, but, but then when it, it presents me something like the idea of a mobilizing function being social adaptation, like, no, it isn't. It's perfect. It's not, it's not adaptive. It, it, it's, it's inert. The idea is that, it's what I want to do, what I meeting, want to grow in. Meeting the, the challenge of society. It mm -hmm. doesn't, it's not necessarily calling the element adaptive. Social adaptive, that could just be like an uh, issue with the wording because it's just how the type sort of realizes its social expectations in society or tries to engage, right? And, and, um, but also why, why would all the types equally be geared towards social adaptation in this particular zone why is it social adaptation rather than adaptation in general when i'm talking about the role the ro okay for instance hey, when i'm talking about the role function right i'm talking let's have, look at say an sli it's not a social adaptation that's going on it's an adaptation towards the domain of intuition where else would your how else would your second dimension elements be used if they're bold and their dimensionality is capped at the ability to meet normative and yep. experience parameters, yep. right? Then that represents, right, their manifestation in helping the type perform its differentiated contribution to society, right? These elements need to be arranged in such a way or the, they need to act in such a way where they're helping facilitate the primary agendas. Right. They're not your ego. They're not your four dimensional elements, but they do share that that very noticeable vector of energy. This is why right. extroversion and introversion right. are the most useful. Okay. So that okay. is so a maybe, facilitation. So maybe I'm being maybe I'm being unfair here in terms of, you know, critic criticizing the social aspect, because really yeah. it's not when we say branch. social. I'll give you an olive okay. branch here. Because you remember yeah. the four dimension uh, elements can also satisfy each one below it. So 4D elements still have 2D mm -hmm. parameters, right? But the difference is, right, yeah. they're still the only 4D elements. So that differentiated contribution can only come from them, right? Whereas those 2D elements, right, that is the extent of their ability to support that agenda. Like, what, what's their role? What are they performing? What are they doing? That's what well, they're they, they, they have completely different roles. The, the role function is the one which is ad adapting to external expectations. The mobilizing function is the uh, is our own journey of growth. It supports the lead. It's feeding directly into it. And then the I, role. I, I, I don't know if it. I don't know if it supports the lead so much as it is. It is. It's its own um, sort of want wanna be motivator. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what, what supports the lead is the creative function. I mean. The chain of command here is role going to mobilizing and mobilizing going to lead, 
right? Roll, roll going to mope. I, I don't, I, no, I don't, I don't see that at all. What do you mean? That's that's literally it's right there, right? Why, why, it, why would right. why would why would roll go to mobilizing? Why would the role go to mobilizing? Because why? process result faculties go from, if it's process, it goes from NTSF. That's both yeah. attitudes. Okay. If, you've de if you defined, if you define, yeah, yeah. just because, just because Whether information value, metabolizes, just because information metabolizes in a certain direction, that doesn't mean that in terms of us, in terms of what drives us to do things, that the role must go to the mobilizing. You're overcomplicating it, though. You could take away the in, uh, extroversion, introversion vectors and just keep I, Jungian. I, I, I mean, I, I'm just, Imagine I'm just, just I'm keeping just... NTS and F. Imagine we're just using NTS and F. Imagine I'm... we're doing that. Imagine we have NTS and F right alongside right. each other. Now, yeah. imagine you switched your lens, value, then it would be N-E-T-I-S-I-F-E. -I -I -E. Okay, bold, N-E-T-E-S-E-F-E. -E -E. Okay, now mental. So, 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 sorry, 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 do you, you say, do you say value? Yes, so I'm saying if you say apply valued to, in the case of the ILE, to N-T-S and F, what do you get? N-E-T-I-S-I-F-E, right, -E -I -I -E. Okay, yeah, sure. right. value chain of N-T-S-F. Okay, mental, also not to your N-T-S-F, it's, it's, it's NFST. What? It's NFST. It's not NTSF. In ILE, NE is going to TI. It's N to T. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. In in the mental ring, sure, but that that that's more to do with blocking. It's not but actually. It's to also do with value, value, right? If we were to make a circle here of information elements going through valued elements for the ILE, well, we know that NE is going to TI. So then what happens next? T I to F E? Eh, no. Well, well, I, don't sound, I, I don't see the value of this. What, what, why, why are we doing this? What do you mean? We're showing the progression of information metabolism. The progression of information metabolism is go well, the, the, the way which is actually, as Alshra set out, it's intuition to ethics to logics and sensation. Those that metabolize in that direction are the process types. Those that metabolize against that natural direction are the result types. Now, and we see that in the relationship between the demonstrative, the leading, and the mobilizing. So it's not, it's not in the mental now. rings and the vital rings. The mental rings and vital rings, they, they, they differ in their vertness, whereas Alshara very clearly showed information metabolism as being the same in its vertness going around, because it's not about blocking. It's about the metabolism of information. Blocking the faculties themselves. That's the only distinction between process and result, for example, is that you're taking a direction, a vector between yeah. the faculties, right? So that holds in any dichotomy that shows a full loop of information going from one element around and then back to that element again, right? So in Model A, you can essentially unite Model A and Model G together in the sense where you would take um, e the ego block, the super id block, and then just make a counter, a, a clockwise circle going straight through them. So NE to TI, wrapping around to the suggestive at SI, feeding into FE, right. and mobilizing, feeding right. back into NE. One, one of the things you were also explaining to me is that it's a lot easier for you to explain socionics by utilizing Model G. But for this you to have that connect and draw circles through multiple di diagrams, <clears throat> that that strains. You were talking my about the double spiral belief. before. You were talking about the mental double spiral. Belief, sorry. Hmm? You were talking about the double spiral before with the mental and vital link, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. So the double, the double spiral, the double spiral sets out the yeah. uh, the blocking and the also the ability the re the value of it for instance is in say the role function being able to block both of the vulnerable function and also the creative function and actually in order to uh, to order actually function properly because the superego block is dysfunctional in its nature the role function actually has to vertically block to be utilized at all therein lies its value um but when it comes to you know, setting out what are the transformations of information. We were talking about this before. It is necessarily the case 
that and i've tried i've really tried to think about it the other way but what gets emotions going right what gets great enthusiasm or the motivation is usually hope right what is hope hope is the idea that there is a possibility there something else to to aim towards or an outcome to believe in that creates the excitement which then creates the action, the sensation, as it were, which then creates the changing of the system. Or a, the process, to to enjoy. Or a process to enjoy. Sometimes you can enjoy undertaking an activity or a process without having a necessary uh, end goal in mind. Sometimes you're just enjoying the process. I enjoy the process of learning about socionics. I enjoy it. At the end of the day, like, would I like this to have a meaningful endpoint? Sure. But at the end of the day, also, the earth is going to be engulfed by the sun when it becomes a red giant and yep. everything is going and, to be. And you can and you can so, and you can go it. backwards. You can go backwards, but it always ends up at a, at a dead end. Oh, OK, but at the end of the day, yeah, like that's, it's, what, that's why that's why result types exist. It, you can go backwards. Yes. It just ends up exactly. at a dead end. So when it comes to, for instance, stops and starts. Right. Yeah. Sensation. Exactly. It stops and starts. So you have a situation where, for instance, let's say the physical environment, right, it impresses upon you in such a way that it creates certain emotions and you react to that and you run away. That is a cycle back as a backpedal. But it doesn't then go next round in the circle. I've, I've really tried to think about how it actually go, it could go round. It can only actually go round with each part creating the, as you were, the momentum for the next part, it only works in one direction, which is the process direction. But that is NFST, 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 not the other way around. Well, I still think this is a distinction that is not only possible in the math, but also manifests very observably between process and result types. Mm -hmm. Why is process and result or evolutionary involutionary such an important dichotomy. Why are the benefit rings so frequent in, in how types resemble one another along them? It's because there are these separate circuits, right, of information metabolism, these separate relationships or rings of relationships that are occurring between uh, different sets of eight in, in the model. Because again, again, Ryan, Ryan, so what? Yeah. So what? That's one of the most observable, useful manifestations of how some do you type use it? Type. Huh? How do you use it? Through charges. Through charges. Literally, like positive static. So process types have positive static elements, right. negative dynamic elements. Result types have positive dynamic elements, negative static elements. Again, right, 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 right. Result outcome. Right, right. Yes. Right. Yeah. So what? So what? It's useful in diagnostics. Do you want to type people or do you want to? I mean, I mean strength, value, strength, value, inertness. These are already very useful in, in, in diagnostics. Okay. I, I mean, okay. Okay, fine. If you say it's useful in diagnostics, we would need to put that to a test between ourselves. It's a different yeah, exercise. Good. I have. Right. I, yeah. Start by taking it seriously. I did not. I would, the the larger dichotomies like positivist, negativist, asking, declaring, process, result. I thought there was nothing to those. I was like, these are just mathematical artifacts, right? That are they emerge through group theory, but they're not worth anything other than that. I was just wrong because when typing people, you would see that the main man like the if someone is stuck between two types yeah. right types that they tend to be stuck between right now with the mirror it makes sense because they share quadra values and they share club strengths fine yeah. but other than that in adjacent quadras it's yeah. usually following process results why because of that different hierarchy of exchange between the Jungian faculties so as a result you get these noticeably, noticeably different manifestations of elements, for example, between kindreds, right? Process and result is a large example of why kindreds have the same leading element, but the manifestation of that element is so substantially different in so many cases. Well, that's because of the creative function being different. It's because of a couple of things, especially positivist, negativist, tying right back in. 
if you take your take our type for example jack what is one of the most frequent differences that you can notice between an ile and an iee and it's the fact that ieEs right they're more about falsifying they're more about looking at taking an idea and thinking about how it could be harmful right what it's lacking what you haven't considered yet have you considered this yet have you considered this yet that's they're taking it and they're rotating it around. Whereas ILEs are the ones presenting positive potential. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. But that. But it's more, and it's not really. But the the IE is more at loggerheads with say the LSI and the IEI on this. Um, but essentially, the idea of the cognitive the cognitive style of the yeah. ILE, the LSI, the SEE, etc. This is around them being like called proposers. And positivism does come, go into this, yes. But there is something being proposed, being set forward. Um, for the ILE, of course, it's more scattershot, as it is for the SEE, more scattershot. And the way uh, they use TI. And the way they use TI. The way that ILEs use TI, right, right, is more about building something unified, right, that can hopefully be TE applied in some way. LIIs, right, they are trying to falsify. They're trying to pick apart what is missing? How come, like, for example, in, oh, so I, are you talking about IE? Sorry, uh, I was talking about LIIs, right? So LIIs, LIIs. they're yes. using yes, their manifestation yes. of T, uh, TI. Yeah, they move towards, towards doubt. They yes. always go towards doubt. Yes. yes, yes, yeah, right. And so you know, like that's how you can see these higher dichotomies actually not just existing as mathematical artifacts, yeah. but actually coming to life in I, diagnosis. I, I, yeah. I, I agree. I do agree with you that positivism and negativism is in, is actually very important. It's very important when it comes to framing the nature of the clashes within the tournaments, which are basically the groupings around flexible and stubborn. Um, but I, when it comes to process result, where does that show up uh, meaningfully? Not not in terms of how you may sort of mistype someone on the benefit cycle. What are the, what, what what would you say is the quality of a process type as opposed to a result type that shows up diagnostically? The the quality, other than the yeah. fact that, other than what I just said before, which is that process types have positive static elements. If you you just earlier, okay, right, okay, okay, you were yeah, you were emphasizing the importance of that dichotomy, right? So this is actually this is a great way that this can feed directly into well, your benefit by saying this is a, a, a good yeah. way that static and dynamic can become very important from a diagnostic perspective and even more useful. But but also I, I disagree with this idea that, for instance, it's about process types having just positive static elements. Well, that's, so, that's the main okay. sort of way yeah. to look at it. For instance, what I would say is that, for instance, that the ESE and the ILE share in their positivism. And what are they both pushing? That's positive, F E and N E. Yeah, but the ILE uses F E very different than the ESE does, right? Mm, yeah, I mean, only in that one's a leading function. The ESEs, the they're function. more superficial in their usage of F E and much more about positivity and inclusivity. Whereas and, ILE, and ILE's they're like showing more and they're mm -hmm. showing more about like this is something really, really freaking important that doesn't matter what you believe in. You should be paying some kind of attention to this. This is this is some serious shit right here, right? ESEs, that's not the manifestation of their FE. They're trying to get people included in a group activity in a way that is not like, like trying to expose a problem, for example. Be like, look, there's this big problem that's going on in the world right now. How do we solve it, right? With NE plus TI plus abstract structures woo but the fe is not done in this like oh i'm trying to put on a positive face and they <laughs> no no that's the not the only like, the only reason an ESC wouldn't do that is the absence of ni and ti i mean the, Remember, when, it to, when it comes to the idea of positivity and inclusivity i'd an say an ESC is in my quadra an esc is in our quadra but yes. you said that if you were an FE DOM, what's the one that you'd be? ESE? <laughs> no, EIE. What, 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 what's going on there? That types in a different quadra. That types over in beta. 
So why wouldn't you be an ESC instead? Huh? Because I'm in, only because I'm intuitive. Oh, that's really, that's the only reason? There's nothing else? There's no other manifestation of things? There's, there's nothing else about how the EIE actually uses its FE that is playing into things? You really think that ESEs and EIEs, the way that they use FE, is 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 the same fucking thing? No, no of because not. they're both moderated yeah. by different creative functions. But what is the main noticeable difference in the way that they use their FE? The way that, well, when it comes to an ESC, it's motivated to the mood of the present locality. But when it comes to an EIE, it's not the mood of the present locality. It's where are things going? And what is, and, and drawing from elements of both the future and the past often. Because where are things going? Now, even, right. even, there's a great, even there's a great past to revitalize or right. there's something in the future right. either to be, to be wary of or to uh -huh. be something which is actually exciting. But it's how often do you see EIEs using their FE to talk about, ooh, the future is looking great? Because last time I checked, EIEs, they are the biggest canaries in the coal mine. Well, like, they're uh, always look, warning look at, about the, uh, look at the speech on look the horizon. At the, look at the speech by JFK. We don't go to the moon because it's easy. We go to the moon because it's hard. Do yeah, you, do you remember sure. the, the the hope and the optimism coming out of JFK? I don't know. That, that's tight. Maybe he is EIE. Oh, oh, he's, oh, he's got to be EIE. Perhaps I, I'm not saying he's not. I just I mean I we, can't, we can't just we can't just sort of switch do a switch like, on, on on the on the primacy and say oh JFK is not an EIE be? because he doesn't do he does too much. Let's, let's, let's something we can both agree on. All right, J, uh, Martin Luther King. How Martin Luther yeah. King? Okay, fine. Right? What is he doing? He's rallying people for a societal problem, yeah. right? Our PDS, we are being subjugated, right? I have a dream that one day we can surmount this, but we have to address this problem. We have to tackle this, right? So it's about addressing problems. There, 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 is, always, you're right, there is always an, an urgency to act to get things along, which makes sense because they're beaters. Sure. But you also notice, like, for example, in the arts, right, EIEs are more about provoking, right? They're more about showing, right? Like they are being, uh, they're trying to instill doubt or shock even in people, right? Mm -hmm. They're not, ESEs are far less inclined to be intentionally using their FE to sow doubt, shock, fear, right, in people. Right, that's not yes. the way that they're typically because, doing. Yes, because they they have introverted sensation. So introverted sensation is moderating the uh, how extrovert ethics expresses itself, which is going to be about things being positive, high quality emotions in the day to day. Whereas EIE, they don't pay any attention to introverted sensation. So the moods they create can be very very shocking. In and service it, of, you know. And since everything is connected uh, in favor of the longer term outcomes, which serve so, the mood they're creating. And they're being mobilized by intuition. So they're being mobilized by intuition, going to sensation, and then EIEs are being mobilized by sensation and then going to intuition. Right? Uh, so, I, the, the, okay, that, that part I. That's okay, it. Why, why is the ILE being motivated, mobilized by sensation? No, the EIE. Oh, the EIE, sorry, sorry. The EIE's mobilizing function is extrovert sensation, yes. yes. In, in that, for them, they are moving from, right, an, 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 an approach of ambiguity, of, of speculating in ambiguity. When the EIE is less confident, they become far more speculative, far more about turning over different ideas, and they hate the ambiguity. They need certainty. But when they're strong, they are decisive and willful. And it's that movement out of extroverted intuition via extroverted ethics to extroverted sensation, which is the growth path of the EIE. And then, yes, they, then they become almost more SEE-ish. You could also say they become SLE-ish. Sure. Like, what is the difference? Now, I, I, okay. To some degree, right I, to some you some degree I, I'm being facetious. Yeah, yeah. You acknowledge before that positivism and negativism is an important dichotomy. Yeah. But, but, also, but also, I okay. have been trying to articulate the value of process results because I think there is something there. I'm not. I'm not actually. I. I, I would not. It would be sincere of me to deny there is nothing there, but it is something which is very hard to articulate. 
Now, when it comes, no, to and the only you know, the only true answers are in your course, right? Well, maybe mm. I, I I can talk. I can try to talk about it now. I mean, when it comes to you know the relationship between the ILE, the EIE, the SEE, and the LSE, right? They are all sort of you could say in a way they 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 all all sort of leading things through towards another age you could yeah. say in some kind of way now the eie and lse that's quite clear the eie is the classic charismatic leader the lse is the classic sort of hands on manager you could say and the ile and the sce are both a sort of the pioneering types coming up with new ideas either coming up with new ideas to lead things forward or for the SEE, new opportunities and initiatives in the moment to get sure. things going. Yeah. So in that way, the, all four yeah, of these types are somehow moving things forward to the next level and taking yeah, some sort of front process, and lead, leading role in that. Extroverted process are sort of catalyst types. Right? Yes, sort of they are, they, exactly. They are, they are catalytic, exactly. And you mm. look, for instance, at the, the introverted versions, right? They are all the ones that are providing in that uh, catalysis a certain guiding post of 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 um saying no this is what it needs to be or that is not what it is so yeah. when it comes to the SEIs and the ILIs those are the ones who are the doubters and both of them are very much about casting doubt on and the and the caretakers and the caretakers they're very much like uh, they take on a caregiving role in many cases. A lot of ILIs that I met too are caretakers, including a, both Gong Fu and Akumani Mani, and also both uh, who you've worked with. Um, you know, they have that SI minus, which is not just worried about their own comfort. SI plus types tend to be more about whether or not they themselves are comfortable, whereas SI minus types tend to be more attuned to whether or not those around them are comfortable. Right? This is the tendency. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I don't know if I've seen that, but yeah. um, I don't know if I have. I think of examples. Have you seen that at all? N no, yeah. I, I think I think of examples such as David Starkey. You can sort of upset a lot of people in in in, in his immediate vicinity. I, well, I don't I'll tell know you what. Yeah. I I've seen SEIs and ILIs being far more um, attentive, right, to whether or not those around them are comfortable than IEIs and SLIs. Far more. Vastly. Oh, um, I, I, oh, I don't know about that. Well, I, I would. I, I, I think personally, I think the so value. I, of the, I, I, I think the value of the I call them the silhouettes, the silhouettes, the super ego types, as it were, are silhouettes, because I think they they take on a similar shape, even though the content making up that shape is completely different. But I think talking about in terms of them both sharing SI minus actually undermines that. I, I and I have I'm really struggling to see it. Like I, for example, the way that um, the way that ILEs and SEEs seem to expend yeah. energy, right, is more similar to one another, right, than SLEs. And, 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 what, and what do you mean by that? What was an example the, you mean? The catabolic mentality that you were talking about before, right? Galvanizing and getting like the uh, opportunities and initiatives, right? Uh, with SCDs, they, they, a lot of times yeah. they're- they, they, mm -hmm. throw, they throw things at the wall and see if they stick. Yes. Now for the ILE, it's more, oh, these are suggestions of different ideas we could try. But IEEs SCDs. and SLEs, what are they doing more of? They're testing people more. IEEs are testing their character and making sure they have good intentions or that their ideas aren't going to hurt people. And, and SLEs are testing training. to make sure, yes, they're making sure they're not weak, right? Um, and so they're trying to test their metals. Do you, do you are you do you have what it takes, right? They, they, they are they are in the, in their nature they are breakers, right? The they're nature, yes, they're trying to break. I, I, I use and SLEs break things and leave them behind broken, and they barrel into things with their delta isms and beta isms. For mm. IE, that is the nature of the. The nature of in terms of their um their their cognitive style is one of breaking really. Sure. If you think of the yes. the actual um static benefit ring, it's more that they are all sort of juggernauts 
for their particular yeah. quadral values. Yeah, so they carry energy a lot more efficiently. That's the other thing, right? They're able to hold on to energy a lot better, right? The, uh, the extroverted process types, they get burnt out. They get burnt out much quicker. Oh, I think, li I think LIEs <laughs> head towards burnout. They're they juggernauts. Are... LIEs are juggernauts. Okay. Okay, okay. Quote an LSE? Uh, yes. Yes. LSEs are, S they're SI value types. They need convenience. They're not, they're not as combative. But, but, they, but well, no, no, no. Combative is different. To, okay. What I mean by juggernaut. Like, I mean not, in, the, in the long term. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't mean in terms of um, them being indefatigable. I mean, I, like I, I, I mean, I mean in terms of sort of barreling head first with their, Either deltaism or gammaism or alphaism, etc. LIEs so, are striving. They, they, they are they are blunt. They are sort of blunt instruments for their particular quadra values. Sure, uh, because they because they're declaring types. They're declaring types. Right. They are um, and they're extroverted and they're declaring types. But LSEs um, are more okay with keeping things as they are. They're they're trying to you know make sure that. The people that they're overseeing are taken care of to some extent, right? Making sure that people aren't wastefully spending money on um, the company's dime, etc. LIEs are more ravenous. They're constantly comparing themselves to those who are doing better because they're trying to be the best. They don't like being below anybody at something. If they see someone who's better than them at something, they're trying to get up there too. And I, just, I, 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 can see, I can see that for SCE. Well, I see, I see more. That LIE, for LIE, it's more that they want to make sure that their competence is being maximally used and mm. they do not care for different hierarchies mm. of, of um, whereby people who are less competent than themselves essentially limit their ability to exercise their competence. Um, but when it comes, well, I mean by the sort of the juggernaut effect, I mean, sort of, it's not indefatigability so much as. Um, LIEs are the most consummate gammas, right? IEs are the most consummate deltas, et cetera, et cetera. It's also where I give a point to the stress groups too, because LSEs would actually be part of the uh, stress group that is the least stress resistant. Whereas yeah, LIEs, I, 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 I don't, I don't buy into that at all. Mm -hmm. I really okay. don't. I think LSEs are too. very LSEs are and ESCs are incredibly hardy, right? They are they are hardy and also they are tolerant of physical extremes. I've While spoken to multiple LSEs who tell me the same thing. Mul I've spoken to multiple LSEs who've said the same thing. When something happens, right, they're able to not show it in the moment, but the second they are by themselves, everything that happened hits them all at once. Like like uh, someone died or something happened at work, right? And if and in the moment they showed resolve, they showed resilience. But the yeah. second that the doors closed, they're oh my god, that was oh Jesus Christ, right? Like m multiple. And, and in fact, EIIs, interestingly enough, have also mentioned that phenomena quite frequently of them showing stoicism in the moment. But once all of a sudden they are by themselves and they're out of that situation, the weight of what just happened hits them once and it the reason i'm saying that is no i have no eiis to freeze doing that I, I can see what you say for lsc for eii i think that, that, that they would freeze i mean if, if 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 they are operating in the same domain they should be vastly differentiated that's true because... the eii for example in this particular situation right the eii said that someone fell on the pavement and broke their arm right in front of them and the bone was sticking out of their arm and they said like they internally were really put off by that. But on the on the service, they said, wow, sir, you seem to have a bone sticking out of your arm. Uh, let us try to compress the wound and I will try to call us an ambulance and make sure that you're on your way. And he mm -hmm. did that. He tried that, to take care uh, of it. And then the EIIs I know, they, they freeze. The they don't know what to do. And then they, they torch themselves afterwards for not knowing what to do and not being competent. I mean, it was kind of like a suppression of sorts. It was like, right. you know, they I, are, I, could see, I could see the LSC in that situation, knowing how to act, knowing what to offer, yes. doing all these things, putting everything of themselves in that moment to adapt to the to the situational pressures because they are adaptive to sensation, right? Because it's flexible, and then afterwards there'll be 
hit by a sort of ethical intuitive javelin where they won't be able to know how to process their attitudes and their feelings towards it afterwards. Mm -hmm. And they're the one, this is the thing, I, I call the LSEs and EIEs, that silhouette, almost the figureheads in mm -hmm. some ways. Because although at the same time they are the ones managing or leading and very much about you know, managing or leading over in that sort of charismatic leader way or that sort of functional managerial way, they ultimately don't know what the correct path is. And so they look right. toward the certainty provided, either the certainty of what to do, where it must go, or the ideology of an LSI, or, or the certainty of someone being able to penetratingly understand their character and their spiritual needs, which an EII is able to provide. Well, that's the cost of galvanizing, right? You can get people who, you know, uh, rally them towards something, but the energy that you expended there can have the cost of, well, it's sort of on them once you get mm -hmm. them invested in the cause, because they're yeah. not going to be able to necessarily lead you to the end zone all on their own, right? right. Um, and so uh, I, I, at the very least, I think we could agree that, LIEs tend to have a better sense of direction, the better instincts in terms of where something is going. The right. Then hmm? the then LSEs or EIEs in terms of like their personal well, direction. The actual. I, I, I think. Okay. 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 Yes. I think e EIEs see. Well, the, for instance, if I look at say Henry V as an example. He definitely had a sense of destiny where things are going. I think EIEs do have a sense of their destiny where things are going, but also they no. struggle. They struggle. It's not a sense of direction in, in that respect, in terms of the outcomes to pursue, but rather it is the logical criteria to create certainty in that. Mm. They have a just knowing of where they need to be, but also they have plenty of doubts in terms of what is, what are the priorities in which to pursue this. Mm -hmm. And that's what an LSI provides very clearly. They create what are the priorities, how you're going to follow that, how yeah. is it actually going to be set out in the structure. Yeah. Um, and then for an LSE, very confident at managing things and making things, you know, operate and keeping things going. But they maintenance their their their, their personal lives can be almost a wreck. Um, especially if when they're older and they may have actually been divorced and they're and, mm -hmm. and they and they and they're Absolutely. wrapped by a sense of guilt. But both the EIE and the LSE are wrapped by doubt, a doubt of sorts. One is a spiritual doubt. Yeah. LSE has a spiritual doubt. EIE has a more practical doubt. And, 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 and the and negativism, so, you could also see that in uh, comparison yeah. to the democratic EJs, the negativism really shows there. Um, yes, yeah. yes, uh, um, but but in a way, their role isn't to be the doubter; it's actually to appear like they're the ones being the catalyst and moving things along. But the doubt is sort of kept almost more within, and sure. needs to be supported by that more introverted proposer. Whereas, if you look at the other way around, look at the ILEs and the SEEs; they are the sorts of catalysts who really are throwing lots of ideas out, scattershot or initiatives and actions yeah. a shot, and they need both a, either an SCI or an ILI to be the one saying, no, I don't think that is good. I don't think okay. that's a good idea. Yes. And, but my, my wife, her role is to shoot down my ideas when she thinks they're going to take things away from the golden mean. Mm. And they're going to make the environment too uncomfortable. It's a great idea in theory, right? But I'm going to be uncomfortable with this, you know, I, I do not feel right doing this at all. She'll, from the purely emotional basis, shoot down the idea. And that's what I need. I need someone to to basically be my canary in the coal mine in terms of telling me, actually, you know, following this idea in, in theories is all great and good. But you're going to make a lot of people very uncomfortable and you're going to make enemies and all the rest. Whereas the ILI does the same thing to the SEE just in terms of don't do that. That's really stupid. That's going to lead to disaster. Mm. And that's yeah. Not gonna work. That, that's going to fail further down the line. Right. I'm, I'm dating an SCI right now. And yeah. the, the main way that she's really able to help me is she's able to 
really like help stop the flurry and help me like actually start like grappling onto the data points and actually like working with what I have, like saying, slow down, relax, right? You're going at a thousand miles a minute mm -hmm. right now, right? Like if you keep doing this, you're never going to get anything done. But I'm like, ah, oh, but I keep doing this because it's very uncomfortable for, for me. Right. To like actually like start like, okay, stop the, the data acquisition and start yeah. like actually like building and like they can help, help you actually settle down and like give you that comfort in a way that doesn't send you into the, you know, like send you trying to run back to your happy place. So yes, I, I understand the argument for duality there. Um, but, uh, you know, and yeah, the negativism, true, the negativism helps anchor the positivism as well, right? Yes. Like, yes, like, oh, yes. The, yeah, yeah, they could see. Yes, and, and, but also you already have positivists and negativists which are in the same tournament, then it is, that that is what creates the the huge clash. So when it comes to what I call the tournament of truth, the the NT tournament, essentially, sure. where you have the IEIs and LSIs and the LSEs and, and IEs, one takes a negativist view towards truth, which is it always depends on the situation. And the other one takes that sort of logical absolutist truth, which is going to be, you know, the LSIs and the IEIs. And so they're going to be at loggerheads. So... That's where you diff getting us back to that point about ILA ILEs and IEs sort of doing differentiated, only because they're both one positive and negative is. But really, the ILE does not take as opposite a view to the IE as say the LSI and IE I do on that particular front. Um, I'd say the best way of telling them apart is where they're growing towards. Mm -hmm. Are they coming out of extroverted logic into extroverted ethics or coming out of extroverted ethics into extroverted logic and yes being able to spot their blood or well, see around their blind spot also helps a great deal in that mm -hmm. or if you see the presence of their creative function is also very helpful one thing though we've been going for two and a half hours yeah what my wife was afraid of um the comments are funny they're trying to say he's negative any like the fate win person that's negative any Ryan is not an LIE, an ILE. But where was the negative end? That's an interesting one. But it, well, I, mean, is, I think Model G yeah. and Model A can work side by side. Yeah. Right? So I'm not picking like it apart and saying, no, this one doesn't belong. And this one has no future. Right. I think they both are capturing the same sort of greater object at different angles. And they can both be used to help gain new insights into how the theory works and to help improve both of you know, um, yeah. both our knowledge, of the theory and, you know, uh, diagnostic criteria, et cetera. So hopefully this interview, I learned some things. Hopefully you maybe have at least some um, less of a critical look, uh, outlook towards Model G, because um, I'm telling you, I've uh, the only reason I use it is because, you know, when working with the information elements on my own time, right, if you put them together, in terms of all the different manifestations of how these elements can be aligned alongside each other while obeying, uh, you know, the rules of how they could be constructed, mm -hmm. right? Whereas two producing or accepting functions are talking to each other, you, these lattices emerge naturally on their own. And so you start to see, okay, this is where Galenko was coming from here. And then once I saw Lau's Taurus model, right, and that it was basically just turning the architecture of Model G into a Taurus shape. Right. I was like, OK, right. Yeah. This, this has some merit. And yeah. So, yeah. Okay. so so I, I think basically two and a half hours. What, yeah. I'd like to, what I'd be interested to see in the comments from people is if Ryan's explanation has been able to make the case to you guys about Model G being something which should certainly not be sniffed at, that it is something which, you know, adds real practical value to understanding the types um, is something which you could more easily understand the type by looking at this in front of you rather than say looking at model a um, I think that is really the point which Ryan's trying to make has that point come across to you from the two and a half hours of us discussing this that's mm -hmm. what I'd be interested to see in the comments when we finish sure. um, so yeah Ryan thank you for coming on thank you for being yeah. such a good sport
um yeah i should get to bed um thank right. you everyone for tuning in as well yeah and take care man more discussions in the future hopefully i hope so All speak right. soon take care bye, -bye. yeah